Wang Zheng drove across the city to catch the train. He had miscalculated the time a bit, so he wandered around the train station. After a while, the young man had had enough and made his way inside the terminal with the rest of the passengers. The lad sat comfortably in his chair and set his travel bag on a nearby seat, contemplating the journey. He had always had a good time in the village. This time the old man hired him as a bodyguard for the young lady. While waiting for the train, Wang Zheng watched the news bulletin. The announcer reported a bank robbery. The suspect was found tied up outside the police station. The train was announced to be boarding. Already at the turnstiles, the young man heard the news that a benefactor had financed the elementary school. The boy smiled. He was the only one among all the passengers who knew the correlation between the two pieces of news. Wang Zheng put on a serious look. He decided that this was not the time to reminisce. He had something to do. Passengers walked briskly down the aisle of the car, throwing their bags onto the overhead luggage racks as they went. It was so crowded between them that the young man could barely turn sideways when he reached the seat marked on his ticket. To the guy's surprise, some guy in glasses was already sitting in his seat and flirting with his compartment neighbor. Wang Zheng walked over and loudly announced that this was his seat. The guy should take the seat designated on his ticket. The fat man gave him a scornful look and said he'd better go look for another vacant seat. The young man faintly smiled. This uneducated young man doesn't even know how to be embarrassed. He should be taught a lesson. He raised his tone and stated that this is where he belongs. He recommends that the fat man leave here immediately. The guy perplexedly pulled the wallet out of his pocket and slowly unfolded it. The wallet was quite plump. The fat man with glasses with two fingers disdainfully pulled out a red hundred yuan bill. Without looking at his opponent, he nonchalantly held out a bill and said that he was buying the place. The girl was indignant at such insolence. Wang Zheng portrayed admiration on his face and incredulously asked if the young man was willing to give up so much money. The fat man snorted contemptuously and said that it wasn't too much. He casually unclenched his fingers and let go of the banknote. The bill landed right at the feet of the surprised boy. He had never seen money thrown around so openly before. His opponent was no longer paying attention to him. He picked up the phone and said that the guy just hadn't seen the real world. Taking advantage of the fatty's inattention, Wang Zheng snatched the phone right out of the surprised guy's hands. He showed the phone to the owner with a smile and stated that he liked the situation much better now. Without waiting for the guy's reaction, the young man tossed the phone carelessly behind his back. The aisle was constantly filling up with new people. It was quite impossible to trace where exactly the expensive thing had fallen. The fat man followed his opponent's gesture with bewilderment. Now he was completely furious. He could not believe that he had been treated so cruelly. He shouted that Wang Zheng was just a robber. The guy advised him to go get the phone right now. Then it might be too late. The veins in the fat man's neck swelled with anger. Unfortunately, he had to admit that he might be without a phone. At the same second, he jumped out of the compartment like a scalded man and started pushing everyone, demanding to give way to him. Satisfied with himself, Wang Zheng sat down beside the girl and said that Fool had hoped to break him with his push. The boy who sat across from them gave an enthusiastic thumbs up. He liked the way the young man had dealt with the fat man. Su Slo smiled and introduced herself. She is a second-year student and is studying at a medical university in the capital. The cute neighbor extended her hand to her savior for acquaintance. The blue-eyed young man couldn't take his eyes off the beauty. After shaking the girl's hand, he smiled. The guy introduced himself in return and said his name was Wang Zheng. At that time, an embittered fat man returned. He began to rage loudly and insulted the young man, accusing him of ignorance. Wang Zheng frowned and promised to throw his opponent off the train if he shouted one more word. The young man irritably said that he would see who would throw who out in the city. Wang Zheng suggested forget about the city. He would do it right now. In front of everyone, the guy started to take off his slipper, holding it by the sole. The presence of people did not bother him. The young man threatened to hit his opponent on his pig's head with his slipper if he didn't shut up immediately. The fat man asked puzzledly what construction site he had come to see and offered to find him a suitable job. Wang Zheng gently pushed the boy in the back. The young man looked back in surprise, not realizing what was happening. His interlocutor leaned to the guy's ear and began to mutter incomprehensible sound combinations. The fat man could not make out anything. Wang Zheng smiled and asked the guy if he understood well what he was told. All of this was frightening to his interlocutor. He turned to his opponent and asked what he had said. Wang Zheng stated without a shadow of a smile that he could say it again. He was about to wet his pants. The fat man became even more furious and shouted that this was simply impossible. He was being provoked into conflict on purpose. Wang Zheng furtively looked at his interlocutor's groin area. The young man was surprised to feel a wet spot spreading in his groin. He immediately screamed in horror. The fat man blushed thickly and covered his groin area with his hands, trying to hide his shame. Covering his nose, Wang Zheng shouted loudly to the entire carriage that the smell was just disgusting. Not all adults know how to control themselves. 
The young man unwittingly became the center of attention. He was insulted from all sides and told that at his age it was time to be more attentive to his body. To the laughter of everyone, the embarrassed boy ran out of the carriage. Even after his escape, the laughter did not stop for several minutes. Wang Zheng smiled and said that the city people were too arrogant. Su Slo asked in surprise how he managed to do that. The young man turned to his companion and asked if she really wanted to know. She nodded her head in embarrassment. The guy replied that it wasn't anything complicated. He just stabbed his opponent in a certain spot. The girl was glad to have met a colleague. She was also studying Chinese medicine, so they clearly had a lot to discuss. Wang Zheng smiled and admitted that he was not as good at Chinese medicine as he thought, but they could discuss the anatomy of the body. The rest of the way to their destination, the guy and the girl chatted nonstop, and the ride time flew by very quickly. Su Slav held out her cell phone as she got off the train and asked to leave her number. She was happy to chat with the guy. The young man said he can't do that, but hopes their paths will still cross since they live in the same city. He headed for the exit of the station, waving goodbye to his new acquaintance. The girl looked after him for a long time. She stroked her chin thoughtfully. This young man seemed really unusual to her. At the exit of the building, the young man was met by two tall bodyguards. One of them explained that they had come on the master's instructions. Taking a closer look at the boy, the man was surprised to think that he didn't look as strong as the master had stated. The bodyguard opened the back door of the car and motioned for the young man to make himself comfortable. The cabin was very comfortable and wide. Wang Zheng sat down comfortably and placed his bag beside him. He tried to visualize the face of the girl he would need to guard. The fat man insulted by the guy had been furtively watching him the whole time, hiding behind the corner of the station building. The young man glumly dialed his uncle's number and briefly told him that he had been humiliated today and therefore would need help. Meanwhile, a dark car smoothly entered the grounds of a wealthy villa located on Tianping Mountain. Wang Zheng slowly lowered his feet from the car to the pavement and got out, looking around the manor grounds with interest. He enthused that he had never seen such a luxurious house. It was clearly worth the many millions invested in the building. The bodyguard turned around and said that millions meant nothing to a modern city. He invited the young man to move on. In a huge hall sat a girl with yellow hair with a remote control in her hands and watched the city news from nothing to do. Looking at the occupant of the house from behind, Wang Zheng mentally gave her 75 points out of 100. The bodyguard bowed to the beauty and introduced Wang Zheng. According to the master's order, this guy will be the senior bodyguard. The girl irritably turned off the TV and angrily threw the remote to the floor, showing her displeasure. She shouted that it was not enough for the guards to follow her father. Now they had decided to follow her too. The stranger shouted that she was tired of it all. She fixed her hair and threw it back nervously. The girl didn't know where to hide her hands. Folding her arms across her chest, the beauty in the black t-shirt and white jacket stared at the young man glumly, sizing him up. Wang Zheng looked at her figure and beautiful, slightly embarrassed face. There was a necklace with yellow stones around her neck. The young man smiled. He realized that he had made a slight mistake. Such a stunning girl would be worth 90 points. Shanga Shishi angrily declared that she couldn't take a step without being watched. She was terribly fed up with this. Turning to the side, she was surprised to see an embarrassed and smiling guy and looked at him suspiciously. The girl walked closer to Wang Zheng and inquired who he even was and what he was doing in her house. She didn't like the shaggy-haired man right away. Shishi's neatness made her squeamish that he wasn't completely shaved. Besides, he dared to show up here in ordinary slippers, which clearly showed the guy's dirty feet. The girl wasn't going to put up with him any longer, and sat down on the table, pretending to be simply disgusted by the appearance of her guest. Shishi shouted to the guard that this bum had made the entire floor in her house dirty. It should be cleaned immediately. The bodyguard frowned. He had already studied the young miss's habits and knew that she was a jealous guardian of the cleanliness of her home. Wang Zheng frowned. He knew that the girl was exaggerating, but he decided for her sake to take off his slippers and not dirty the floor. He lifted his foot and carefully removed the slipper, holding it by the sole. He did the same with the other foot. In front of the astonished hostess, the lad spread his hands apart and carelessly scattered his slippers in the corners. The slipper landed on the perfectly scrubbed floor with a distinctive slap. The sound sounded like an insult to Shishi. The girl blushed with anger. She couldn't believe that an arrogant guest would do such a thing in someone else's house. Seeing the guy smiling smugly, the hostess called out loudly to Zhang Yong, even though he was standing behind her back. Shishi angrily pointed at the guest and shouted that he must leave the house immediately, or else the bodyguard himself would leave. Zhang Yong thought that Master had acted rather rashly in hiring this young man as a bodyguard. Wang Zheng explained to the girl that her irritability was actually caused by the excessive delay of her period. Shishi instantly flared up and shouted that this type was really just an ordinary pervert. Snapping out of her seat, she turned and ran up the stairs, leaving the three bodyguards at the bottom. Zhang Yong faintly smiled and raised his thumb up. This miss very often gets on everyone's nerves. 
Wang Zheng smirked. He knew that the girl had accused him of foul play in vain. Now he would make her suffer. The bodyguard put a friendly hand on the guy's shoulder and offered to wait a bit for things to calm down. When the young man said he would help a little later to solve the black circles under his eyes, they became friends. The man almost cried with happiness and shook his savior's hand firmly. He was happy to meet Wang Zheng. It was at this moment that Shanga Shishi returned with backup in the form of Han Xinye and design director Sheng Pei. She angrily called out to Zhang Yang. The boy couldn't choose which one to look at. All three beauties looked gorgeous. He rated each of them 90 points. The pretty girl in Han Xinyi's yellow dress asked who the dirty guy was. She assumed that he was the one who had hurt their Shishi. The man began to explain to the girl that this guy was Mr. Wang Zheng, who was hired as a bodyguard for Miss Sha. The young man took a step forward and told the bodyguard that he would explain it properly himself. Han Xinye looked at him in surprise. He explained the reason behind Shangi Shishi's irritability and added that she might get acne on her face because of it. The pretty girl in the dress immediately turned to her friend and laughed. She liked that this stranger was able to recognize her problem at once. The landlady got even more angry. She called her girlfriends to deal with the guy instead of making a fool of herself. The girl tugged at the designer's elbow and pleaded. It didn't matter that the young man had been invited into the house by her father. He must be disposed of. Sheng Pei thoughtfully smoothed her costume, consisting of a salmon-colored jacket and skirt, and agreed to help out. She looked intently through her glasses at the uncomprehending guest. The first thing she noticed was his unwashed hair. The guy's clothes were clean but rather worn and couldn't arouse positive emotions from Shangi Shishi either. In addition, this guy was barefoot, and his dirty feet could be seen from afar. His slovenliness was really conspicuous. The director asked Zhang Yang to take the man to shower in the guest room. They will wait for him in the living room in the meantime. The bodyguard asked the young man to follow him. Wang Zheng looked back perplexedly and looked at Sheng Pei on the way. Han Xinye laughed and swept the type still looking at the design director. She deserved to be a goddess. The girl frowned. The girl sat comfortably on the couch. Shishi asked to help kick the guy out of the house. Sheng Pei suggested to take her time. He could help her with the healing. When the young man came out of the shower, the girlfriends were chatting passionately about him and did not immediately notice the appearance of the guy in the living room. Now there were perfectly washed feet sticking out from under the blue terry cloth robe. No one could say he was dirty. His hair was clean as well. After taking a shower, this guy was a completely different person and didn't look like himself. All three girls simultaneously gasped when they saw the man in the bathrobe. None of them could have imagined the miraculous transformation. Han Xingye couldn't help herself and embarrassedly exclaimed that Wang Zheng had good skin. He was a very handsome guy. The young man smiled and replied to the girl that thanks to his homemade mask, her skin could be just as wonderful. Han Xinye almost squeaked with delight and asked her to make one for her. Sheng Pei asked her not to get carried away and to return to the matter at hand. She offered the new bodyguard a chance to show off her abilities, assuming that Uncle Shang Guan wouldn't call out a mere guy. Wang Zheng thought about what exactly to show these girls to make them believe his bodyguard's skills. He pointed his finger decisively at the design director and demanded that she give her jacket. All three girls were surprised. Shanga Shishi jumped off the sofa and blocked Sheng Pei's view. She was sure that the young man was up to no good. A little embarrassed, the girl still took off her jacket, suspecting that Zheng had asked for her clothes for a reason. She smiled and handed the young man the clothes, saying she trusted him. The landlady looked at her friend in surprise. The new bodyguard brought the salmon-colored jacket up to his face and sniffed it carefully in front of the girls. The young man looked at Sheng Pei and said that she had been feeling dizzy a lot lately. The girl asked what he was getting at. The guy told me that there was a drug stashed in the perfume that calmed her nerves, but after prolonged use, she could be in someone else's power. The design director couldn't believe that Wang Zheng was telling the truth. To be honest, she had experienced similar symptoms not long ago. The girl said in surprise that she didn't understand how it could happen. She had specifically bought this perfume at the store. The young man assured the interviewee that her health would soon improve if she stopped using perfume. Wang Zheng closed his eyes and made a theatrical gesture with his hand, like a magician who was about to show an unseen trick. The guy said he's going to stay in this house from now on, and anyone who tries to harm them will know torment and suffering. Sheng Pei got up from the sofa and invited the young man to go shopping with them in the afternoon. He needs to dress well. Shanga Shishi couldn't believe that both her friends had betrayed her. She hoped that with their help, she would drive the impudent man away. Sometime later, three girls accompanied by a guy came to town in anticipation of shopping. Wang Zheng clearly stood out with his simple clothes. So many store visitors couldn't understand why the three beauties were walking with him. One of the guys behind his back quietly whispered to his acquaintance that the guy was probably a rich boy type. The young man became furious and shouted that it was all nonsense. He is actually a bodyguard for the girls. Shishi asked him to calm down. She asked to try on the suit that Sheng Pei was holding. Wang Zheng sighed heavily. 
he didn't like business suits. Taking advantage of the moment that the guy was in the fitting room, Shanga Shishi expressed her doubts that he would make a reliable bodyguard. Sheng Pei explained that it was just his first time shopping with hotties, it was normal. The fitting room door started to open. Wang Zheng appeared on the doorstep. In a white shirt and black pants, he was simply irresistible and looked just like the girls. All three of them simultaneously groaned. Even Shanga Shishi was slightly embarrassed. They didn't even think that a young man could be so handsome. The boy couldn't understand why they were only now seeing his beauty. In fact, he had always been so irresistible. Sheng Pei walked up to the cash register and resolutely declared that she was taking everything. She placed a few packages on the counter and paid. At the exit of the store, the design director asked Shishi where she would like to eat. Han Xinye suggested Narellan, which has a great steak. Wang Zheng turned pale. He realized that he would now be hanging around stores and restaurants all day long, looking after girls. After a while, the four of them came to the restaurant the girl was talking about. Its name was lit up in blue neon. The restaurant was very comfortable and expensive. Every now and then, long-legged waitresses in blue uniforms walked hurriedly through it. The four interlocutors sat down at one large table. Empty glasses stood before them, waiting for a fine champagne worthy of the gods. Wang Zheng said thoughtfully. He couldn't even imagine the existence of such a fine restaurant. Shanga Shishi immediately flared up and demanded that he immediately shut up. No need to embarrass them. Han Xinye exclaimed that the same guy who was harassing Sheng Pei was walking over there. The girl turned her head, perplexed. Hearing the conversation about the strange guy, Wang Zheng raised his head and looked at the young man annoying the design director with interest. Three young men approached their table. The guy with glasses was called Zhan Ming Quan, and he was the crown prince of the Blue Ocean faction. Shishi stated that seeing him is just disgusting. Han Xinye added that he has the face of an upstart, and she is disgusted to look at him. The young man walked up to Sheng Pei and happily said that they met here completely by chance. They were brought together by fate itself. All four at the table fell silent. There was a long pause. Everyone waited for Ming Quan to figure it out and walk away. The young man seemed as if he had only now paid attention to Wang Zheng and inquired who the gentleman at the table was. Shanga Shishi decided to take revenge on the guy and solve all the problems at once, so she introduced him as Sheng Pei's boyfriend. Wang Zheng almost choked on his milk. Ming Quan couldn't believe it, and indignantly asked the girl if her boyfriend was really sitting at the table. The design director raised her head and looked at the young man. She replied thoughtfully that it was true, they were dating. Wang Zheng almost shouted in indignation. He thought that it was not good to involve him in his affairs just because he was a bodyguard. Ming Quan folded his arms on his chest and disdainfully inquired about the guy's name and what his family was like. The young man looked indifferently at his opponent and replied in a calm voice that it didn't concern him at all. The boy was furious, his fists clenched by themselves. The air was not used to being crossed. He demanded that the phrase be repeated. The guy asked Shen Pei why she liked such horrible people. She pointed to the guy sitting next to them. The heroine replied that he should pay attention to how he spoke to whom and told him to choose his words. At that moment, the guy was pleased that the girl stood up for him, and he took her hand, unexpectedly for her. The girl did not understand the guy's behavior at all and was very surprised by his actions. It was unpredictable. The guy said he thought he was an arrogant guy, but it turned out he was just a coward. He told him to hit him if he had any manhood left. He said that he had taken a step towards the girl he loved. After that, the hero could not stand it and kicked the man in the chest with all his strength. All the girls were very surprised and, of course, scared they did not expect such a feat from the guy. Lying on the floor, all he did was mumble something incomprehensible, and the young man just stood there looking at him. He put his foot on his face and wanted to tell him a lot of things. But he gathered his thoughts and said that he didn't want to do it and would never have done it if he hadn't asked him to do it. It was his wish. He also added that if they dared to cause trouble, he guaranteed them the same pain as Zhang. Two of his friends rushed to his aid and wanted to help him get up. They took his hands and lifted him up. As Zhang was leaving, he began to threaten him that if he waited a little longer, they would see which of them was really stronger. The girl was scared and said that he was a very stubborn man and would never let it go. The heroine said that her perception of the guy changed a lot after he did that. The guy said he didn't care that her performance was spoiled. He said that he was a man anyway, and he had no qualms about it. The girl with pink hair laughed a lot and said that her friend had finally met her blood enemy. Meanwhile, it was getting dark outside and a very beautiful moon was reflected in the window of the house. They discussed that according to the announcement, there was a person here who was disturbing the peace. After that, three policemen came in and the same young man with two of his friends who never left. The heroine asked Zhang why he came back here in the first place. The girl replied that he should be careful because the police chief was with him. The guy wiped himself with a napkin and said that if he could not fight, he would ask someone to do it for him. This made Zhang very angry, and he told his uncle that this guy had beaten him up and pointed his finger at him. 
but the hero was very calm and said that it was all untrue. Who can confirm this at all? The policeman approached the guy and asked if he had any proof that he hadn't touched or beaten anyone. The girl was very angry, and she said that they were all witnesses that Zhang was just deceiving everyone, and no one had touched him. The policeman replied that they could simply be in a contract and said that her words were not credible. She asked why they believed what the guy said, but couldn't believe what she told them. The hero laughed and said that he just had a rich father, which is why the entire city police force came to deal with it. Zhang said he was just a dirty fish, and he would never be on the same level as him. This made the guy very angry, and he was not just angry, he was literally itching his palms. After that, the hero hit Zhang on the cheek, and he immediately started screaming and covering his cheek with his palm. After that, he was very surprised that even in the presence of the police he was able to hit him and leave a red mark. He said that he was not afraid of being caught by the police, and he decided for himself that he would slap him every time he met him. The girl with pink hair was delighted, and said that it was a great plan and worked out perfectly. After that, Zhang was angry and insulted, and he could not stand it and put his hand on his pocket with a gun in it. He said that now they would see who was really in charge and threatened the boy that he would find out what a coffin lid was. The policemen were simply at a loss and asked what he was doing, and where did he get the weapon. He wanted to pull the trigger, but without noticing anything, he closed his eyes and shouted that he wanted the guy to die. But he didn't understand anything at all when the hero took him by the neck and took his gun. He was just surprised. After that, he asked him to let go of his neck because he was in a lot of pain and discomfort. The guy said that he thought he had been away from the city for too long, and that everything had changed a lot because of that. He realized that politeness was useless. The policeman started shouting how he dared to violate the general order and told him to release the hostage. But the hero didn't care. He told him not to move at all and pressed his neck even harder with his palm. Zhang started begging for his policeman uncle to save him, and told the hero to let him go. The guy simply said that even if he decided to do something, he was not his rival. He said that first of all, he can defend himself, and no one can intimidate his people. The hero bravely added that his beautiful girlfriend should not be mocked. Secondly, he continued that he is quite calm, but no one can provoke him at all, otherwise he will remember it. Thirdly, the guy said, he must be too smart because he lives by the principle that if they don't offend him, he doesn't offend them. But if someone offends him, he will simply destroy that person and will not even feel sorry for him. The police said that he was clearly not a simple guy, and that he could be very useful in their work. The policeman said that Zhang was a pitiful man who gave him trouble every day, but could he really back down? He thought that he was not a personal bodyguard, and that he had to take the road of justice, not the whims of his nephew. The guy asked who wanted to detain the young lady. It was the chief disciple of the first martial arts family in Beijing. The investigators were very surprised and thought, what is Li Jian doing here? What could he possibly be doing in their area? Instead, Li Jian went up to the girl and bowed to her and thanked her very much for her message. The girl took his hand and said that he had come just in time. She asked him to teach those rascals a lesson. She explained that while they were eating, a group of policemen burst into the hall and wanted to arrest them. Pointing to the boy, she said that he was the most horrible. He not only wanted to hurt his sister, but wanted to do the same to her. She was very scared. She wanted to continue, but she didn't have the courage. But after a while, she decided to. The heroine said that he kept looking at her breasts. She was a clean girl, and he looked at her as if she were unclean. This infuriated the main student of the first family of martial arts to no end. He was infinitely angry. The bully started shouting that she was a terrible girl, and that she shouldn't say stupid things. He said that no one wanted her at all. After that, he turned to his uncle, a policeman, and told him to stop dragging his feet and arrest them. But my uncle didn't care and started shouting, Why isn't he doing anything? What was going on? The heroine laughed at him and said that he hadn't fully understood the whole situation and what awaited him. She said that he was an instructor at the first Han martial arts school, and she was the eldest daughter. She asked if he realized what happened now. Zhang couldn't believe what he was hearing, and asked if he was really an instructor at the first Han martial arts school. He began to make excuses and said that he had not looked at the girl's breasts and also said that he was not interested at all. After that, the hero patted Zhang on the back, but since he did it from behind, the guy did not realize who it was. He was even a little afraid of it because he did not expect to get a slap on the back, and he even bent over from surprise. Zhang began to ask why he was doing this, and why he had contacted them all in the first place. He also said that he was not interested in the girl at all. After that, he received a blow to the face, so hard that his glasses fell and broke and he was in great pain. But the girl just laughed at that and said that it was a very good deed and a beautiful shot. Her friend also laughed at this and told him that it would be a very good lesson for him to think about what he was doing. Zhang lay on the floor and begged his uncle to save him, to which he just looked at him and realized how pathetic he was. His uncle said that he had shamed Hai's family and that he could not protect him because of that. He won't even be able to protect himself after this. 
The guy advised the policeman to stay out of it, and said that Miss Han's father was much more powerful than Zhang's father. The girl said that everything was just fine, her anger was gone. She asked the boy to leave as soon as possible. The guy put his hand on the police officer's shoulder straps, and wanted to give him a little advice from himself. He started to say that he would advise him, but the policeman did not let him finish, and said that he did not need advice. The hero understood everything, and without saying anything to him, took his hand away and went back to the girls to go home. The uncle breathed a sigh of relief, and decided for himself that he would never meddle in his nephew's affairs again. It was closing time at the coffee shop where all this was happening, and of course everyone there was asked to leave. They left the coffee shop and realized that it was indeed night, so they got in the car and drove home. The heroine was shouting about how wonderful today was and how it was the most interesting period in her life. What she liked best was when Wang Zheng kicked Zhang and thus destroyed all his self-confidence. The guy asked how well Xu Xu could drive, and if she could drive well. The girl behind the wheel said that it was not his concern and that he was her bodyguard. He should call her mistress. Wang Zheng said that they should try to get rid of the car that had been following them all along and harassing them. She couldn't believe what she was hearing and asked if someone was really following them and wanted to know something. The heroine admitted that if it hadn't been for that scoundrel, she wouldn't have paid much attention to the car that was following her. The girls wanted to calm her down and told her to at least try to get away from them and she would call the police. She, she was confident in her abilities and said that she could do it. No one would ever be able to catch up with her. After that, she put her hand in gear and was determined to escape from her pursuers. She pressed her foot down on the gas with all her might and said that now she was really going to race with all her might. The pursuers could only see dust from her car because she drove so fast that she kicked up all the dust on the road. Then her friend realized that she had no connection at all and would not be able to call the police or her friends. The heroine suggested that these might be people who want to kidnap Shi Shi, and she regretted not asking her father to escort them. Shi Shi didn't know what to do. She said that she couldn't get rid of the car that was following them. She started shouting to the guy and said that he was her bodyguard and to immediately figure out what to do. To which he replied that he was her bodyguard and his job was to protect her, not to give her any ideas. She was very shocked by this and asked if he was even a man, and if so, to think of something to do quickly. To which he replied that of course he was a man, and he had no delays, no delays at all, and he had nothing to worry about. The girl was very angry about it. She said that he was already boring her with his reproaches and such phrases. The bodyguard said not to drive the car in the direction of Villa Tianping Mountain. He went on to say that you should try to go to sparsely populated areas because it will be easier to commit fraud there. Shi Shi listened to him, and they headed to a sparsely populated place. They decided that it would be really better. She said that an hour had passed and asked the guy why he hadn't gotten rid of them yet. Instead, he was thinking about the fact that the girl was a good driver. But then there was a problem. Their gas was almost empty. She said that if she continued at the same pace, they would run out of gas very soon. And the guy said that you need to enter the machine until it runs out, and then think about what to do next. She was angry and said it was a great idea, but of course she was being sarcastic. She really didn't understand why her dad was praising this guy, because he had even told her to treat him with respect. She knew that he was the only one of the three who could fight, but was he really that good? Meanwhile, the people in the back of the car said that they were approaching the Dushan Bridge. The guy behind the wheel told everyone to get ready to set a trap for them. It was already a dark night, and apart from the headlights of the cars, nothing was visible at all. It was very dark and eerie. They had already seen a sign saying that they were entering the Dushan Bridge, and the girl was driving as fast as she could. She said that there was this bridge ahead, and that she had about 15 minutes of gas left, no more. The heroine was very frightened when she heard about this bridge and said, Isn't this the famous narrow and dark road? She said that the drivers were driving very slowly because they could not see anything at all. But she, she said that they had nowhere else to go. Then the guard started whistling at her body and it made the girl very angry because she was very nervous and he was calm. But the guy had a reason for his whistle that he couldn't explain to the girl and decided it would be the best idea. She, she told everyone to get ready and hold on very tightly because now they were going to accelerate. She shifted gears again and drove as fast as she could. It was very dangerous. She frightened everyone present because she was driving so fast that even she could not always see the road well. She, she was driving on the bridge itself and there were only rocks and a river below, and this could not help but frighten the characters sitting in the car. The pink-haired girl told her to stop because she wanted to live a little longer and did not want to die. But then she was blinded by a very big light, so big that her eyes simply stopped seeing the road and she turned away. She, she began to scream about how much her eyes were burning, and the bodyguard was also very scared for her, and did not know what to do. He stood up bravely and decisively and took control of everything. He started driving instead of the girl, which was very risky. He changed the gear the way he felt comfortable with, and it made a little sound that was terrible. The guy was trying his best to apply the brakes, and he seemed to succeed, but it was very abrupt. 
This caused the car to squeak very loudly and turn in circles. The brakes could not stop the car immediately. Then a big blue truck was coming toward them, and it was right in front of them. This, of course, scared everyone very much. But her bodyguard managed to turn the car around so that they could stay alive. And then he shouted that it was close. Shishu's eyes still hurt a lot, and she was crying even because of this, because she was burning so badly. Suddenly, she was interrupted by the fact that she did not understand what had happened to her right leg. She looked down and realized. She saw the guy's leg pressed against her knee, but she still didn't understand what he was doing. Then she felt pain in her leg, because the guy was pressing the brakes with all his might, putting his foot on hers. Shishi told him to get out, but the bodyguard justified himself. You said it was the only way to save them. He said that she did not scream, and then said that her legs were very elastic, and he liked it. After that, he put his foot back on her knee and began to run it along her white leg. The heroine began to shout that he was a real scoundrel and that now was not the time to argue, so let him stop now. Her friend said it was a planned robbery. The red car was just a decoy that brought them here. They saw that there were three large trucks in front of them, completely blocking the entire road. The friends got out of the car to decide what had happened and what the scammers wanted from their company. My friend was horrified to realize that they had fallen into their trap, and now there was no way back. No way at all. She started asking him what he should do next. After all, he was the one who had to find a solution to this situation. The girl begged him to say at least something, that when she returned she would call her father and tell him to quit his job. Her friend told the bodyguard that this was no joke and that they could only rely on him now. The second girl also confirmed that he was the only one who could protect them, and that he was their only hope, and they begged him to help them. He said that he would take on this difficult task, but he didn't care about the airport, and Shishu didn't think so at all. The heroine wanted to tell him everything she thought about him, but he just didn't let her finish, and interrupted her. He said that she was sitting here and not even moving, so that she would not get out of the car at all and would quietly wait for him. The thief who was chasing them did not understand where the boy came from because there were supposed to be three girls in the car. But he thought that he looked too weak and would not be able to harm them in any way, so they were determined. The criminal began to say that he had nothing to fear because he had nine guns and advised him to back off. The bodyguard said that they had been feeding very hard to meet them and asked what they wanted from them. The scoundrel pulled out a gun and said he wanted to take one of the girls from the Shangguan family and asked if he had any complaints. The guy said he had no complaints at all and let him do whatever he wanted. When the girls heard this, Xu Xu decided that she had to intervene and put her hand on the car very loudly. She asked if he thought he was so brave. Could he do anything to protect them? Her sister said that it was their body's guardian, so could it not protect them at all? But she really understood the whole situation and said that it was unlikely that they would be able to avoid trouble. It was impossible. At that time, their bodyguard said that he was very nervous and asked the thief to give him a light. Of course, he agreed and said that if he had a very good relationship with them, he would certainly treat him. Then he promised him that after he lit up, he would show him what a real show was. Of course, all the girls were very frightened and could not believe what they were seeing with their own eyes. But the guy just started smoking and when he lit a match he made a small sound that scared the girl. He started smoking, but of course he realized that it would be very harmful to his health and it was wrong to do so. But when he was smoking, it started to produce a lot of smoke, which the three girls really disliked. It was already everywhere. This smoke smelled terrible and simply intoxicated everyone who smelled it. Shishu also confirmed that the flavor was very strong and even somewhat enchanted. A girl with pink hair attracted the attention of one of the sisters and pointed at what was happening and told her to look. All the guys were lying on the floor, screaming that they could not get up, that it hurt them too much, and asked that they would rather be killed. My sister asked the body of the guard if they became like that because of his cigarette. She said it was very fascinating. He also confirmed that this medicine works only on men. It increases male hormones a hundredfold. They asked how long the effect would last. She said her conscience was tormenting her, and the guy reassured her, and said that the effect would end soon. She began to ask if they were fainting from the pain and how much pain they were in. The heroine asked him for half a kilogram of this medicine. She said that she wanted to deal with all the scoundrels who had insulted her. He said that such a large dose could kill everyone, but she was settled and asked him to give it to her anyway. The hero began to say that today's people were chasing Xu Xu and managed to completely block the signal to the capital. After that, the bodyguard approached one guy and zipped up his pants fly to make him look cultured. He also decided that he should be taken with them so that they could interrogate him and know who they were interfering with. They set off for the city they needed. It was already night, but the moon was clearly visible. But they got there, and the guy just sat there with his hand on his knees waiting for further events. Here the thief finally opened his eyes but he could not understand where he was and what exactly had happened to him. The hero, completely calm, asked if he had finally woken up because he was tired of waiting for him. He told him to tell him who hired him to catch Miss Shangguan. Why would he even want to do that? After that, the thief saw that the guy wanted to smoke again and asked him not to. 
he said anything but that. The thief also added that, if he was right, the guy had defeated them with cigarette smoke, and he was sure that nine guns would not have such an effect. On the floor, he said that he would tell him everything, but only if he promised not to kill him. To which the hero said that he had no choice now, and of course she agreed to tell everything as it was. At that time a candle was burning. It had a beautiful yellow flame, which was incredibly beautiful at first glance. The thief told the story for so long that the candle that had been burning during this time burned almost to the end. In the end, the hero simply said that Min Hao is the largest group in the capital, and they have no reason to deal with such trifles. The young man said that the thief was surprisingly cooperative and decided that he would let him live after all. He began to thank him for not killing him, saying that he would definitely not be left in debt and that if he needed help, he could contact him. After that, the hero said that if he was offering it himself, he could still help him with a very important matter. He said he had exactly what he needed to help him, but he said it was a very serious matter. When he said what he needed, the rascal was scared and wished it was a dream, but the guy said that he should promise to do it. After that, he took a round pill out of his pocket and did a little hand manipulation and threw it. Before he could even react, the thief had the same round yellow thing in his mouth, and he didn't even realize what it was. But of course, out of desperation, because he was tied up, he just had to swallow it, not knowing what would happen next. After that, he started crying and saying that he had deceived him because he had promised not to kill him. To which the hero replied that he did not even intend to kill him. But the thieves pointed to his throat and wanted to ask what it was. The young man replied that it was a poison he had created, called Undying in March. He had to come to him for three months. He also added that there was no need to look for a doctor to be cured. He said that there was no need to take any other medications. The hero said that he would definitely be obedient now, so let him tell his boss what happened today. He asked that he also not forget to add that Wang Zheng had finally returned and now no one would have any peace. What happened in the building where all the criminals were at that moment was that the guy was very afraid. He fell to his knees in front of his boss and told the whole story and said that he simply had no other choice. He realized his mistake and said that he had done his job very poorly and asked to be punished. Their boss, finishing his cigarette, began to think about what to do with this thief and how to punish him so that he would remember. He praised him for taking responsibility for his actions and told him not to get involved with such people. After these words, the boss decided to put out his cigarette without finishing it, but wanted to continue the conversation. He asked the guy if there was anything he could have missed, if there were any small details or elements he might have missed. The thief started to say that this guy said that, but he was not even allowed to finish his sentence before the boss interrupted him. He was angry and intrigued and asked what else he could say, since he had already said so much and they didn't know what to do. She continued that he said he had to tell him something, that Wang Zheng had returned. This made the boss very angry, and he said that he should have told him that Li Min Hao was a complete fool. The guy looked at him in disbelief, and could not even imagine how he could have guessed his words completely. Also, after that, the main man and their team started shouting that he was back. He was finally back. He was waiting for it. He continued that now, with his appearance, they can safely leave the Shangguan family alone and not touch them. After that, he poured himself a glass of wonderful red wine and decided to drink it and even toss it a little. He said that he would not touch him, so he would not touch him. He had been waiting for this for a very long time, and now he could live in peace. Looking at his reflection in the window, he said that he was looking forward to meeting Wang Zheng very much. When the hero returned to the girls, they couldn't believe their ears, and she screamed, how could he ever let him go? Shi Shi was angry and said that those who dared to attempt to kill her deserved a very heavy punishment and no mercy. The guy said that letting go of a small fish would catch a much bigger fish later. Doesn't she understand that? The sister also said that there was nothing wrong with Wang Zheng's handling of the matter and that he should be trusted, she said. Her sister could not believe that she was not on her side, but she said that she had called her uncle and he told her to add more people. The sister with pink hair shouted without hesitation that she also entrusted the body of the guard to the girl. She said that if he gave her half a kilogram of those drugs, she would believe him even more, and the guy pretended not to hear her. She, she sat down in a chair and said sadly that she didn't want to talk to anyone about anything anymore, not at all. But then, after a while, she screamed that she was in a lot of pain and could not understand what exactly had happened to her. No one in the room could understand her body, and the guard immediately asked her what had happened to her and what exactly was hurting her. Her sister said that this happens to her every month, and no doctor has been able to cure her yet, but she, she told her to keep quiet. The second sister approached Wang Zheng and asked if he could cure her illness with his unconventional methods. The girl was crying and saying that the pain was killing her and she couldn't stand it, to which Zheng told her to lie down and let him massage her. Shi Shi said that he was not allowed to touch her with his hands in the massage area, otherwise she would kill him. He started touching the girl in the hip area and making her feel very nice. His movements were just wonderful. 
Wang Zheng told her not to be nervous because he only likes sophisticated girls, and she was not like that. A few minutes later, she could not believe what had happened. She really stopped hurting where he had been massaging. She was very happy and couldn't believe what had happened because she had been suffering with those pains for so long. Her sister asked how she was feeling. Shi Shi replied that she was fine and had no pain anywhere. The guy put his hand on the couch right next to the girl and asked her the same question. Was she sure she wasn't in pain? She was very nervous and said that he shouldn't continue the massage. She even wanted it a little bit because she felt better. The rescuer said that he would do it tomorrow and will do it every day, and that this is what will cure her in a month. She was happy that it was so simple, just five minutes and the pain was gone, and she sincerely thanked him. The guy said that he had touched an unclean thing and had to wash his hands right now, which made Shi Shi very angry, and she said he was a scoundrel. My sister heard all this and watched the picture, but she didn't say a word. After he left, she came up to him. She began to thank him for what he had done and for his golden hands, and she didn't even know how she could repay him. The hero said that it was nothing to cure dysmenorrhea, and there was no need to thank him. But my sister said she was grateful for his help with the robbers. She said that her uncle was the brains behind China's giant business, and that he was able to raise the family to great heights in just ten years. Shi Shi was the only daughter and has always been provided for by the business, and now she has all this wealth in her hands. She thanked him once again for helping to save the girl, and added that she did not expect such heroism from him. He put his hand on her shoulder and told her that everything was fine and she didn't need to look for anything about him because he had done good. After that, she asked him to ask her just one question, which he was to answer. She asked why her sister was sometimes so irritable, but at the same time she was very fair. The hero replied that she shouldn't worry because all that was teasing her was him and told her not to think about the bad things. After that, she went into her thoughts. How could he go against Shi Shi's wishes and still be special to her uncle? The sun was shining in the morning, beautiful and clear, heralding a new day and, of course, new events. The thief came and asked him if he really wanted to make a new plan to kidnap Shi Shi and advised him not to. He said that he was not afraid of anyone because everyone could only threaten, and in fact, kidnapping a girl was not a problem at all, the brother said. The boss added that Wang Zheng had returned and now he was waiting to see what the boy would really do to save him. The young man asked his older brother what he should do with the poison. He replied that if he had promised to give him the antidote, he should go to him. He also told him that if he failed to fulfill his assignment next time, he should never show up in front of him. He was very frightened and said that he understood everything, and now he would go to fulfill all the instructions he had given him. The boss was thinking that Wang Zheng had returned, so why didn't he go in and greet him? He thought, should he come to him himself, to accomplish such a feat and find him and talk to him? At that time, Shi Shi was traveling with her body as a guard, and there were a lot of people crossing the road. She said they were going to the KFD because her sister wanted to eat and even took her place, so they had to go. And then they heard about a theft and that someone was asking for help to catch the thieves. And of course, the guy was interested. He saw a girl trying to catch up with two hooligans who were running across the street. But she was not doing very well. She she started shouting that the boyfriend should immediately help her catch these scoundrels. Let him run out and help her now. The guy put his hand in gear, and the girl did not understand what he was supposed to do. He turned it on to top speed and immediately wanted to move off to catch up with the thieves, just as the girl had asked. She was not expecting it at all and was afraid of such a sudden speed, because she thought he would run after them and not press the gas. Without even waiting for the right traffic signal, he ran after the robbers and made a sharp turn. After that, he braked very sharply and, as if flying out of the car, immediately ran after those scoundrels. He caught one of them and kicked him in the chest, after which the thief fell to the ground and could not do anything. Wang Zheng gave another punch with his hand and it threw the guy very far away. He was in unbearable pain. The hero kicked him in the face with his sock and made a very terrible sound, and, of course, the criminal was in terrible pain. He also caught the second thief, who was holding the unfortunate girl's purse, and hit him as well. After that, the handbag fell from his hands and flew to the floor, but it didn't even have time to fall. Wang Zheng very deftly and unexpectedly caught it with his hand and headed toward the girl who was robbed. He gave her the purse and she thanked him very much, saying that she would definitely not be in debt. She gave him her business card and told him her name was Yu Ai Liang, and said that for his act, she would pay him what he needed. But he said that it was not difficult for him at all and that he did not need to worry. She gave him her business card anyway. After that, a completely unknown person came up and apologized, and Shi Shi did not understand who it was. But when they turned around, they saw that everyone wanted to ask the guy for an autograph and take a picture with him. The girl felt some jealousy and said that you don't have to be beautiful to save the world. Of course, the guy was very happy and said that no one should push and that they should take pictures one by one. Everyone would have time. The police came up and said that he was now a suspect in an assault and that he needed to come with them to clarify the details. Shishi stood up for him and said that he was just defending a person and what crime were we talking about? 
but the hero immediately understood and calmly asked if they were from the Pingyang County office. The policeman said that this was the case and that he had a lot to do, so he should just come with him as soon as possible. Shi Shi took her hero's hand and said that they also had a lot of things to do and were very busy, and then they left. But the policeman caught up with them and told them not to resist and just come with him. No questions asked. The boy was very amused, but he repeated the name of the district again, and immediately understood why he was being led. When he came, he saw a guy who made him very angry and hit the hero. Everyone started shouting that it was an attack on a police officer and that they shouldn't wait, but call the police immediately. But then one girl noticed that he was not a policeman at all, but just a man who wore a uniform and was deceiving everyone. It was not the time for the policeman to start saying that he had been exposed and that it was not in his plans at all. Everyone had to believe it. Then the guy stepped on him with his foot and was determined to talk to him. The hero said that he wanted to help his friends and go against him, but said that his acting skills were very poor. After that, a girl from the street brought three real policemen and showed them the real scoundrel. They told her not to worry, and that they would ask for her help. She said they had a lot of work to do today. The hero could not believe that he heard the policemen talking to this woman. They spoke to her as if she were in charge. Afterwards, she said she was very grateful for that, and asked for his business card so that she could thank him in the future. Shi Shi was still angry about it because she was jealous of him, and she said that they were waiting for them and they had to go quickly. They said goodbye, and the woman told them that if they needed help in the future, they should not hesitate to contact her. She was thinking that the guy didn't look like an ordinary 27-year-old, he really had a special talent. After that, it was already evening, and the same beautiful moon rose over the building again, always at the same time. It was the same KFD cafe where my sister had been waiting for two of her friends for a long time, and she was very hungry. There were as many people there as possible discussing various topics, both personal and business. After watching nine seasons of MasterChef, the hero was just great at cooking, and this was another of his talents. He turned out to be a simply lined up meal that you just wanted to eat at once and leave nothing behind. The girl said that it was incredibly wonderful, and asked him to teach her how to cook in the same way, and she would definitely be able to open her own restaurant. But the guy didn't like it, he said that if they weren't going to eat they could give him their portion. Shishi was angry and said, who said she wouldn't eat it? Her sister also said she was eager to try it. They took chopsticks and wanted to try his food, which looked incredibly appetizing. They thanked him for his concern, but one of them said that she had already eaten, and if he wanted to, he could take her portion for himself. He was very angry, but after taking a portion for himself, he thanked her for it and just quietly started eating. She asked him how he cut and ate roast duck very much like her father. Did he know him? He said that how could he possibly know her father if he came from a small town and didn't know anyone in the capital? The girl did not understand why her sister asked the others about her father. Hadn't Uncle Shen died many years ago? Shi Shi told the girl to be quiet and not even to continue the topic because they knew it was very painful for her. But she calmly said she was just mistaken and it didn't matter. She just thought they ate the same food. Wang Zheng did not understand at all because he really could not know anyone in the capital and he just calmly continued to eat. Shi Shi said that if he had no vacancies, he should be fired and she also reminded him that she would fire him anyway. Three guys came up to them and said that a lot of majors had appeared in the city and they thought that money could buy everything. Wang Zheng agreed with the girl and also said that she was the same and belonged to them if she did not deny it. But a man came into the cafe and looked at their table very strangely and couldn't figure out who was sitting there. At that time, Shi Shi took the guy by the hand and said that he would definitely pay for that phrase and it was not for me. The man looked at their table and thought about how beautiful the girls were sitting there and said that they had come to the right place. The friend who came with him had no idea what he was talking about or why he was doing it. After that, the man called the waiter over and whispered something to him, and the waiter just couldn't refuse him. He walked over to his friend's table and said that since there were no seats, four people would join them. But Shi Shi said she was against it. They had paid for their place and food, and she didn't want anyone near her. The waiter said that he needed to think about it again, and emphasized that these people had connections. When she heard this, it really pissed her off because she also had connections and didn't want anyone around. The guy came up and said that he was a general manager of a casino and was very lucky to meet such beautiful girls. She, she said she was also lucky, pointing to the guy and saying that he was their boss and needed to ask his permission. He started to say that the girl would never miss a chance to get him into trouble, but he was even enjoying it a little bit. He said that he did not want anyone to join them and said that they should not interfere with their dinner. After that, a guy who wanted to have dinner with them put his hand on the table and made a very sharp sound. He said that if he wanted to continue chewing with his teeth, he recommended that he reconsider his decision. Wang Zheng said that he was being very arrogant if he threw out such phrases, and he should understand that there is a price to pay for such words. 
After that, the hero told the girls that if they were afraid of blood, they should close their eyes and not look. The girls had no idea what he was talking about, or what he was going to do, and they were naturally very scared. The guy himself also did not understand what Wang Zheng was talking about, what was in his head, and what actions he would take. After that, the hero pulled out a knife and pressed it to the guy's hand, who was obviously very scared and couldn't even say anything. His knife was at high speed and almost at the hand of the guy who put it on the table. He didn't even react and take his hand away and then he saw that he had a knife in his hand. He felt a lot of pain and couldn't take his hand away because the knife was pierced right through the table. The guy wanted to scream in pain, but Wang Zheng covered his mouth with a napkin and told him not to scream. He told him not to say anything because he was used to solving all problems on the spot and not putting them off until later. He told everyone in the room that if you don't dare to call someone or start shouting, he will make big problems for them. He told the guy that he shouldn't have looked at him like that because he had threatened his friends. He said he should be thankful that he was alive. The girl started clapping and said that she really liked Wang Zheng and spending time with him. The manager of the restaurant came out and couldn't understand what was happening in his restaurant. And the waiter started to make excuses but didn't have time. The manager approached the guy and said that a gentleman was inviting him and that his bill had been paid. The girl took his hand and told him that this is the room that leaders of all countries use when they have dinner at the KFD. Shishine could not believe that her bodyguard body was wanted by the gentlemen of the Imperial Hall themselves. My sister also could not believe it and could not even say a word, because it was the first time she had heard that someone was invited there. The heroine said that she had to leave quickly, not to keep them waiting, and she had never been there before. But the manager stopped her and said that she should apologize. But only Wang Zheng was invited, no one else. She started to say that she also wanted to go to the Imperial Hall, but her sister told her not to behave like that. The bodyguard said that it could be dangerous because they didn't know who was sitting there, so it was better to stay here and he would tell her everything. After that, the manager remembered something else that he had to tell the guy, so he went up to him and told him that the guest from the Imperial Hall asked him and their friends to leave the place, otherwise he could not guarantee that an accident could happen. His arm was hurting terribly and he did not understand what had happened, so he agreed without objection. He pulled the knife out of his hand, but the blood splattered even more and the pain became more unbearable. He could not bear it any longer. After that, holding a knife in his hands, he threatened the guy that they would meet again and he would see what he was really capable of. But this did not frighten him at all, and he thought that such people should be expelled as soon as possible because they are nothing but trouble. Here he came to the Imperial Hall, which had a very beautiful and shiny sign, indicating that he was in the right direction. The manager kindly invited the guy into the hall, saying that he had been expected for a long time and needed to hurry up a bit. Then he opened the door and the guy saw a man whom he had seen for the first time. He did not understand who it was. Thinking carefully, he realized that it was an old acquaintance of his who had been waiting to meet him for a long time and finally it happened. And he simply said that he had been waiting for him for a long time and that they had finally met. It was a very long-awaited meeting. Wang Zheng said right away that he had guessed that he was waiting for him. They had been supposed to meet for a long time. The man put his hand on his head and began to report that Captain Black Wolf had to report. The hero looked at his hand and then at the man's behavior, expecting him to give him something so obligatory. But he realized that they were not soldiers anymore so they didn't have to salute. They could just sit down. The man said that the captain finally came back when he wanted to give up. Over the past four years he always remembered him. The only thing that has sustained him to this day is his sincere friendship and hatred for that entire family. Wang Zheng began to recall the whole terrible situation, the shooting that took place right on the street and he felt uneasy. He realized that if it weren't for them, the sharp blades wouldn't have brought the situation to this point. And the criminal was asking to be left alone. The man said it was a trap. Old Shen Bi, if he were here right now, he would definitely not cover for them. After that incident, he sat down in a quiet place and fled abroad, and his whereabouts were still unknown. He continued that, since he went abroad, the killer has become world famous and very famous. They say that he single-handedly came easily to seven gold medal tasks, and he became the best hitman in the city. But he said that he knew it was the captain, because no one had the same abilities as him. Wang Zheng said that it was actually the same old man who asked him to come back this time which is why he is here now. He couldn't believe what he was hearing and asked him if he had really asked to come back. But he said that he didn't know what it could mean. The only thing is that he said it was time to act. He would definitely not leave this case unresolved and would look into it. The man said that now that the boss had decided to act, their revenge was closer. But the guy told him not to get too hot. He said that now they should act separately. Each of them should do what they really can't do and be responsible only for themselves. He also said that he had good news. He had found a relative of their family. The man could not believe what he was hearing. Meanwhile, night had fallen, but the light was still shining brightly on the top of Tianping Mountain because of a situation that had occurred there. 
The girl said that on the way here she wanted to get at least a word out of the guy. He promised to tell her what was going on. She begged him to at least tell her who was in the Imperial Hall. She was infinitely curious about all these actions. He asked if she had told him everything. He said if she wanted to know the secrets, but he still wouldn't tell her. Then he went on to say that if she made him feel good, then he could tell her everything that happened. Shishi rushed to the guy and immediately started screaming, saying that he was a scoundrel for offering her sister such a thing. But he said that he only meant that she should fetch him some water for his bath, and if she got the wrong idea, that was her problem. She was still very outraged by this, and she did not know how to behave. She just shouted that he was a scoundrel. Wang Jung said that there was no need for further words, and then he turned around and said that he needed to take a bath. My sister said he lives in the same house with her. Doesn't she know anything about him? And she said that if not for today's situation, she thought he had no friends. The girl took her sister by the hand and said that it was late and they should go home. The heroine did not want to leave very much. But she said she asked her uncle everything she was interested in. And he said that nothing was clear yet, but that he had seen the ghost of the past. Shi Shu couldn't believe what she was hearing, and she wondered what kind of secrets Wang Zheng might have from her. Then she came up with an idea, because her family was very curious about what the bodyguard was hiding from her. She quietly went to his room and opened the door a little to check if anyone was there. Then she decided that before he returned she would check everything out and finally find out what his secret was. The heroine found the suitcase, but it was hidden very far away, and then she heard a voice from behind her asking what she was doing. Of course, she was very scared because she did not expect him to return so quickly. She couldn't say anything, so she was silent. She had a lot of thoughts in her head, but she couldn't put the words together at all, so she just shouted that he... She started screaming that he was a pervert, and why was he walking around naked? You have to wear clothes. But he said that she had come into his room late at night, and there was no need to lecture him, because it was his room. She, she began to make excuses, and said that she had just made a mistake in the room, and that she did not want to get to him at all. But he said that she was the one who broke into his room, and that she was the rascal, and the girl said that she would definitely change him. After that, he saw a suitcase being pulled out from under the bed, and he couldn't understand why the girl needed it. He thought that maybe she was so interested in him that she was even willing to go through his things. When he opened it, he saw that everything was in place and she hadn't seen anything at all, which made him smile. Then he remembered his youth, and began to stroke a photo of himself and his friends in great shape. He took it in his hands and began to remember all the wonderful moments with them. It was a wonderful time when there were no worries. Afterwards, he mentioned a wonderful coffee shop where they used to drink coffee together and discuss everything. There were beautiful views, and he went to have coffee by himself. He remembered all the moments that happened to them. He also saw the Blue Ocean Square, and those were the best moments of his life, which unfortunately cannot be returned. He thought that just because she wore perfume didn't mean he would remember her. And then the girl heard it. She couldn't believe it at all. She was infinitely surprised by what the guy was saying. The heroine thought, how is this possible? She bought this perfume right out of the store. Suddenly, the guy's thoughts were interrupted by a message that came to his phone, and he immediately decided to check it. Picking up the phone, he began to read what he had written with great enthusiasm. The message said that everything had been fine for the last six months, and he was afraid that the hero would get upset. Wang Zheng thought that there was no evidence left in the store at all, no records of purchases or sales. A girl approached him and asked if she could sit next to him. After all, there were no free seats anywhere. He immediately evaluated it and mentally gave it 85 points and said that of course it could sit down. She told him her name was Zhang Min Qi and gave him her business card and asked his name. And of course he introduced himself. Taking her business card in his hands, he began to look at it with interest and read it, wondering what kind of lady had approached him. He then said that she was the eldest daughter of the Zhang family. He asked if she had come to avenge her brother. The guy said that it is still rare to meet a girl who combines beauty, intelligence, and honesty. She said that it was a special offer, and if they stayed, everything would go to her. She guaranteed that the guy would not offend him again. But the guy said that only 3% was not enough for him, and he wanted at least 10% of the entire share. The girl said that 10% of the Blue Ocean was too much, because she would also make 300 million in profit. He said that 300 million was certainly tempting, but he couldn't decide for her. He was just a bodyguard. The girl held out her card and said that this was the best club in the country, and only he would get everything for free. But the hero said he was very pleased to talk to her and asked what her second request was. She replied that her second request was for her brother's face. She said that no one could cure him, and maybe he could do it. The guy said that he had already learned his lesson and was now asking him for his help, which was strange. Then he said he would forgive him if only he had an antidote. He wanted to know how sincere the girl was. She said that on the day he hit him in the face, he should have already thought about compensation. It was too cruel. The heroine said that she was inviting him to dinner and let him choose the place where he wanted to spend it, and then she asked if he agreed. 
The guy said that she was a really confident girl, and then he agreed to have dinner with her. The hero said that he would choose the place, but he had one condition. She had to agree to one of his requests during dinner. He also went on to say that after this dinner, there would be no more differences of opinion between him and her brother. He gave his word. They came out of a coffee shop that was very nicely built and stood right in the center of the city. Impossible to avoid. The heroine thanked the guy for deciding to make peace with her brother, and he said that there was no problem. He thought they had the same parents. But why were they so different? Could they really be brother and sister? They didn't look like that at all. The hero looked at the business card again and thought that he really wanted to see what would happen at the dinner. Shish's sister saw him and asked him what he was doing here. What business could he have here? The boy said that his father was with the girl today and that he would not need to worry about her, so he could rest. At the time, the girl said that the guy had offered her 10% of the shares and she signed it. She asked if he had anything to do with it. The hero said that Jiang Min Ki was indeed a great driver and a beautiful woman. He asked why she was helping him. She told him not to think about it because his talent cannot be replaced and he fully deserves such conditions. Then she said that she was inviting him to dinner somewhere as a sign of gratitude for all the work he had done. He thought that this girl was too smart and that next time he would have to be careful. Otherwise, she would find out about everything. At the same time, the girl was watching the guy in the car mirror, and she was looking closely at his reaction. We heard very strange sounds from the restaurant, as if there was a quarrel. Some guy was gagging the other guy and telling him to keep quiet. But inside, everything was as usual. Everyone was discussing their own topic, some talking about their personal lives and some about work. When they saw two young people, they started discussing whether they were dating. And the girl realized that if this continued, the guy would get angry. She told him not to rush and to eat slowly because he could hurt his stomach. To which the hero replied that he only felt normal when he ate. He was very hungry. Then he heard a conversation behind him where the guys were saying that if the girl agreed to drink a glass of alcohol, he would feed her. But the girl was not mistaken and said that she was not the kind of person who would completely sell herself for just a couple of dishes. They told her not to break down because this guy is respected by everyone here. And everyone dreams of him treating them the way he treats her. The girl took the glass and poured it on the guy and said that he could keep dreaming. But she was not like that. This made him very angry and he said, How dare she do this? Did she really believe in herself that much? After that, the scoundrel took his hand and hit the girl on the cheek. It was very painful so that she even turned away. Everyone started shouting, What if he hit the girl? Isn't he afraid of being arrested? This is not right. Here, the heroine who was having dinner with Wang Zheng stood up and was determined to solve this problem because it was painful to watch. But the hero unexpectedly put his hand on hers and wanted to calm her down. He told her not to get in. After that, Wang Zheng said that he would deal with the situation himself because he had more strength and wisdom. Then the girl ran up to the guy who hit her and wanted to attack him. She took what she could get her hands on first. But of course, he was much stronger than her. And when she was very close, he kicked her and she flew away. Falling to the floor, the girl held her stomach because she was in great pain and looked completely defenseless. Then Wang Zheng approached her and asked her very casually what her name was. She had no idea who he was or what he wanted. But she said her name was Liusha, and she also told me that she was a second-year student at the Kyiv University. The guy said that it didn't matter who he was, he just wanted to help her, and then he asked if she was scared. Wang Zheng helped her to stand up, and after she had gained a little strength, she said that she was not afraid of them at all because they were scum. The hero smiled and said it was great. He also added that she was a very brave and courageous girl. He took her hand and gave her a bottle, and she couldn't understand why she needed it. But he explained everything to her. The young man said that she should hit her abuser and pointed his finger at the guy, who did not understand what was happening. Everyone present began to discuss the situation, some praising the girl and others condemning her. She was very grateful to the guy because he was the only one who saved her, and she didn't just talk about it. She thanked him a lot. Here everyone started telling her not to do anything she would regret later. They told her not to act impulsively. The scoundrel was not afraid of her at all. And even after all this, he was still insulting her. He did not believe that she would hit him. And then the girl made up her mind and threw the bottle she was holding directly at her attacker. He could not understand what had happened at all. How could she even dare to do that? He was very angry. The heroine took the bottle and smashed it right into the thief's head. After that, he started screaming that he couldn't move at all. His friends started saying, How dare she do that? She's going to pay for it. They were extremely angry with her and shouted that they would both pay for it. After that... He took a knife out of his pocket. When Wang Zheng heard this, he immediately realized that he had to marry the girl. But he was waiting for the right moment. He immediately ran up to the scoundrel and decided that now was the moment to act immediately. Running up to him, he grabbed him by the pants and suddenly did something that surprised everyone present. He lifted it completely over his head, but the guy didn't understand how this was possible, because it was much bigger than him. 
After that, Wang Zheng threw him to the floor, which made his friends even angrier, and they also started acting. His friend pulled out a knife and stabbed him in the side. He bled a lot and was in a lot of pain. Standing next to his boss, he began to justify himself, saying that he only wanted to, but he didn't have time to finish. Their boss just fell to the floor, holding his side, which he had pierced with a knife. His friend was screaming that it was unintentional. Everyone in the restaurant was very scared and started saying that they needed to call the police and an ambulance. Everyone was in a panic. The guy took the girl's hand and said that it was time for them to go. She was also confused about the situation. He took her to the car, but the thief who was lying on the floor started shouting to write down the license plate number. The girl who was waiting for them in the car said that bleeding in a public place was a very serious act. The heroine began to cry and say that it was all her fault. She said that she did not even know how to thank him. Wang Zheng said that everything is fine, and it did almost nothing. They will deal with him anyway, so she is safe. When his girlfriend heard this, she couldn't believe her ears. How could he even say that? She asked if this was not the best thing for a young girl to do. She asked if she had any family problems. The heroine was sad but said that everything was fine. She just wanted to take over for her friend for a couple of shifts because she asked. Wang Zheng listened very carefully to their conversation, but he didn't even know how to react to it. What to say? The girl said that Kiev University was right in front of the gate so they could drop her off there. The friends actually saw the sign about the capital's university and realized that the girl was telling the truth. When she got out of the car, she waved and shouted that she would definitely thank her defender one day. A friend said that his ability to attract girls seemed to be at its best, to which the guy said that he could do nothing with his charisma. She was even a little angry about it and said that he overestimated himself too much, that he was beautiful, but not that much. The girl was about to drive off, but the guy stopped her and told her to wait and not start the car. Wang Zheng said he wanted to see what would happen there and whether anyone would insult his new friend. The guy told her that he should get everything he wants, so if he confesses his love for her, she has no right to deny it. He took her hand and told her that if she didn't want to, it was her problem. He wouldn't hold himself back because of her. She started screaming for him to let her go, and that it was wrong to think that if he had money, he could do whatever he wanted. And then Wang Zheng reappeared, and the heroine just couldn't believe it when she saw him. Of course, she realized that he was her salvation. She started screaming for the guy to save her because she was very scared and didn't want to go with this bastard. This made the person who wanted to take her very angry, and he slapped her, saying that she would do what he wanted. He told her to stop screaming because it was annoying him. Wang Zheng walked over to him and touched his shoulder. The hero immediately asked who he was. What is he doing in these parts? And what exactly did he want from him? He fell to his knees and started screaming about what he had done to him. He was in great pain and could not do anything about it. His friend was very angry and asked him how he dared to do that. Who was he and what was he doing? The girl was very afraid for her new friend, and she shouted his name excitedly, hiding behind his back. The guy pulled out pepper spray and pointed it at him, after which he said he understood everything and was gone. Wang Zheng gave the girl a spray can and told her that it would protect her when he was not around again. He also told her that it was very late and she should leave. She was very grateful to him but said she wanted to do something else. She started spraying her abuser in the eyes with a spray bottle and said that she wanted to teach him a lesson so that he would not come to her again. He was in even more pain and could not say a word. He just lay there moaning in pain. The girl thanked Wang Zheng for today and said that she hoped very much that they would meet again someday. Wang Zheng said that she finished off an already wounded enemy. This girl reminded him of him in his youth. At that time, there were very interesting events in the dormitory itself, which had a great continuation. The thieves were lying on the bed and did not understand how his post was stolen, and then some student managed to beat him. His father was very angry with him and said that he was not worthy of his title because some girl could handle him. But still, he said that he would first call an ambulance and let them take him to the hospital to make sure he was okay. The son begged his father not to go, but his mother told him not to worry, because if his father did not help, she would. Her mother said that to show that girl what she was really capable of, she had to make her disappear from the capital. She called the judge and apologized for disturbing him so late, but then told him the whole story. After that, the morning came. Everyone seemed to calm down a bit and set off on new adventures with renewed vigor and inspiration. The heroine introduced Wang Zhang to a new designer and said that he would pick out a bow for them for tonight. When she tried on the dress, she couldn't even say anything because she loved it so much. After Wang Zhang tried on his suit, all the girls looked at him and he said that he didn't need to be flattered. His girlfriend told him that he was surprisingly very attractive. She didn't expect the suit to fit him like that. He also boasted that he was a very good cook and she would fall in love with him even more when she tasted his dishes. The heroine said that it was time for them to go and she was sure that with her marriage she would make the whole Yalan club fall in love with her. At that time, Wang Zheng thought that she was really very beautiful and that many men would fall to their knees for her. 
They headed for the club, and of course they talked about various topics on the way, until they finally reached it. There were infinitely exquisite dishes and rich people who looked very beautiful, and some even gorgeous. The girls approached the guy and asked if he would like to have a drink with them. They really enjoyed his company. But he apologized, saying that the girls were very beautiful. But he had a meeting with a special girl. He was waiting for her. The guy laughed and said that compared to Miss Minka, these girls were clearly not up to par. She was much better. Of course, this offended them greatly, but no one paid attention to it at all, and they just continued talking to each other. When he saw the girl with whom he was supposed to have dinner, he immediately ran to her and was very happy that she had come. But when he took a good look, he saw that there was a guy with her, and he had no idea who he was. Everyone started discussing it, and also didn't understand what kind of a wonderful guy she was with, but everyone liked him very much. My friend asked the guy what he was up to, and he asked her to walk with him by the hand. That was his request. She was very surprised by this, and immediately thought that people might suspect something wrong and misunderstand. Wang Zheng squeezed her hand even harder and told her not to even think about taking it away because they had an agreement. She was still questioning him about what he wanted to do. The girl said that he just wanted to show off his beautiful companion. Her friend came up to her and told her that he had been waiting for her for a long time and asked her who the guy next to her was. She greeted him and introduced her companion for the evening, telling him everything about him. He was very surprised when he heard what kind of family he came from, and then he realized that it would not be easy with him because the family was influential. Then Wang Zheng ferried her over and told her that it wasn't true, and after that she felt very ashamed of her deception. He said that they met when he came here to study, and after that they started to communicate well. He said it was a very interesting story, and asked if the girl had come to the capital just to have fun. Wang Zheng said that his family bought two diamond mines twenty years ago, and he came to the capital to look at the diamond market. Of course, the most important thing was that he met Min Qi, and the hero said that he was very grateful to fate for her. The heroine did not understand how he could know so much information. After all, not everyone knew this. Her companion told her that she shouldn't worry, and that they wouldn't be going to the market anytime soon. But she still didn't understand what he was up to. Then they took two glasses of wine, and he wanted to drink it. They touched the glass to the glass to make a click. The new acquaintance said that he would be happy to invite young Mr. Wang to his modest little house. The guy told him his entire story and everything he knew about him. He could not understand where he got this information from. All these years, in order to escape from the problem, he hid it and he never expected that someone would ever find out. Wang Jung said that it was his first time at the club and he still wants to visit a lot of places, so he had to go. Did the hero think that the Wang family was from Philadelphia? And he was very much interested, because the guy was no slouch. It was already a dark night. The moon was shining very bright and beautiful, and the two heroes got into the car to drive away. Wang Jung spoke to the girl and asked her if she could imagine her surprised face, which could have been harmful in this situation. She was very angry with him and said that he used her without her permission. He put her in a very uncomfortable position. The guy began to make excuses and said that tonight's dinner could not change anything. She wanted him to do something for her. But she didn't understand why he needed Su Tianran. He's very famous. Has connections throughout the capital. Wang Zheng said it was because he didn't like everything about the Su family. This story happened a long time ago. No need to miss the chance. They drove up to the riverbank and the girl stopped the car so that the boy could get out and go to his room. My friend said she wanted to know the reason, but he opened the door and got out of the car without even listening to her. She started to catch up with him and asked why he didn't tell her it was so important, so she could help him. He said there were two reasons for this. The first was that she was very ambitious, and the second was because of her mother, who could have ruined everything. She was confused and asked how he could know her mother. She asked if it was true that she was somehow related to him. Wang Zheng said that her father told her that her mother died due to bleeding after giving birth, which is sometimes her cause of death. The heroine could not understand how he knew all this information. She asked him why he mentioned the Su family. He replied that he was a member of Su's family, or rather the eldest daughter, who fell in love with the guy and even gave birth to two children. Because of this, the family elder felt very humiliated and threatened her with the life of her boyfriend and children, so he forced her to return. But when she returned, she was supposed to get a share of the inheritance. Many people didn't want her to come back, so they created an accident. The girl was very sad and asked if her mother really didn't die because of childbirth. She was just killed because of her inheritance. After being a little sad, she recovered and asked the guy why she should believe him at all. But he was confident in his story and said that she could just go to her father and ask him anything she wanted. She left. Wang Zheng shouted that after that she could join the Su family and he would give her everything that was rightfully hers. She could not believe what she heard and on the way she wondered if it was really true, if it was simply impossible. After that, she got into the car and drove off. She never said a word to the guy again. But he wasn't upset by this. 
and after that, he immediately took out his phone and started dialing the numbers that were in his head. At first he dialed zero, then zero again, then one, then two, remembering he dialed one again and finally put five. The person he called immediately picked up the phone and started shouting that he had finally called, and she would help in any way she could. Wang Zheng said he knows that it has two mines in West Africa. He wants to use all his strength to enter the diamond mine. After that, he said that as for his plans in China, he could recommend him an influential person. His name was Zhang Ming Qi. They started talking about the Chinese market, about their promotions and advertisements, and about the cuts that had taken place there. The two guys met. They needed to discuss this topic face to face and decide what and how to proceed. The hero asked if Zhang Min Qi could really help them. And what kind of merit does a lady like that have for helping him? He said that he didn't understand it himself, but it was the best choice she had made in a long time, and she had been waiting for it for years. They said that Zhang Xiaoxi seems to be a very intelligent man, and will not be easily fooled. The girl, who was walking as if she were a simple passerby, listened very carefully to the conversation between the boys, and she became angry when she heard it. The guy began to report everything as if he were on duty, but Wang Zheng heard this and said that he was not wasting his skills at all. But he realized that there was another rascal behind him who both friends had to teach a lesson. The hero turned to the captain and said that he would be very easy to handle. They wanted to remember the old days and the days they spent together. Wang Zheng said that they have a sniper on the seventh floor of the eastern building, and they need to go 200 meters ahead. His friend said that the sniper had a very poor view and luck was clearly on their side. After that, he suggested a competition to see who could catch the most. Wang Zheng asked about the competition and said that it should be very interesting because they hadn't practiced it for a long time. He decided to take the money out of his pocket and wanted to start this friendly competition in a very good and spectacular way. He was curious. When he threw them up, they all started to fly away. After that, the guy announced that the competition had begun. Everyone pounced on the money and started shouting that they shouldn't touch it, and everyone wanted to raise as much as possible. All the guys realized that the situation was bad and none of them could do anything, because there were too many of them. Suddenly, someone made a step, and it was so loud that one of the snipers thought it was a gunshot. After that, the man who took the step just fell down, he couldn't move and didn't understand what exactly happened to him. He was hit in the chest by a bullet, of course, he was very severely hurt. It stuck right into his body. A little later, the second guy was shot directly in the body, but this time in the knee. The second sniper also got a bullet in his body. But this time in the back, of course, it hurt a little, but it was tolerable. The girl saw all this and began to say into her earpiece that they had completely failed the task and needed to return. Wang Zheng came up to her and asked her what she had just said, at which point he injected something into her neck. He said he was leaving the others to him, letting his people figure out what to do with them, and he would get away from the sniper again. After these words, the hero immediately disappeared. He had many more important things to do and a mission to accomplish. There was a house with the same snipers in it and he realized that he had to somehow save his friends and help them. He said that he had to run away as fast as possible. Suddenly, from behind him, he heard someone say that there were probably few survivors. He didn't understand how he was 200 meters away and now he was here. How could he have done that? Then he realized that now is not the time to think about how he got here. He had to save himself. The hero decided that if he struck first, he would have a slight advantage and could buy time. He hit Wang Jin, but he put his hands on his chest so the blow was not very painful. He could continue to fight. The guy who hit the hero thought that he was really very strong, and it would be very difficult to fight him. After that, he took a sword and said that no one needs strength if there is something to fight with. He will definitely defeat him. Wearing a metal sharp thing on his arm, he was determined to attack the guy and started running at him. Wang Zheng just stood there and watched his next actions with his mouth open, very curious as to what would happen as a result of this reaction. But he hadn't even gotten there before he smelled a very strange odor. He did not understand what it was. After that, his eyes went dark. He could not see anything at all around him, and he did not understand what had happened. His subconscious did not allow him to get into reality. He no longer understood anything at all and did not feel his body. When he opened his eyes, he was already tied up, and he heard two people talking. A girl asked if he was a murderer. She said there have been a lot of murders lately. They saw that the thief had recovered, and she immediately started questioning him. Who hired him? And what was his goal? The guy was silent and did not say anything. He decided to remain silent. And this further divided the girl who was interrogating him. She left the room and said that she would leave him to Wang Zheng, let him interrogate him and do whatever he wanted with him. After that, she left the room and slammed the door very hard, making a very loud bang. Wang Zheng began to ask how the elite of the military could fall so low. But he said that it was not his place to judge him. He said that he had to return to the capital because it is part of the Golden Triangle. The guy who was tied to the pipe angrily asked him how he knew he was from the Wolf Cry Squad. 
Wang Zheng said that the Wolf Cry Special Forces are very decent in China, but society doesn't know exactly where it comes from. He showed him the map and said that he had invented it himself, and he was the only one who taught such people, so he could easily distinguish them. When the thief heard this, he couldn't believe his ears and asked if he was from the dragon's hide. The hero said that not only he, but also Li Ming Hao, if they wanted to deal with him, they overestimated themselves. He replied that the difference between a wolf's cry and a dragon's husk would not be described in words at all. He admitted his defeat. Wang Zheng said that if he agreed to his terms, he would be able to let him go and not kill him, he would leave alive and unharmed. But he said that it made no sense, because he was training soldiers, and he knew that they would not tell anything. The thief then asked what he wanted. The hero replied that he had to help him with something for three months. The protagonist told Chung that he hadn't decided what he should do yet. Van then looked at his opponent with a long and penetrating gaze. The main character took a special needle and stabbed the tied-up guy with it. He said he didn't have much choice. Chung asked frightened at the protagonist, would he really kill him too? Van told the prisoner that he had used a special poison against him. A hundred days after the poisoning, the bones of the body would begin to dry up and break. Cheng asked the protagonist if he would now have to get an antidote every three months. The van untied the prisoner. He said he would be just an ordinary pawn. The protagonist instructed his rival to train his own army. When Cheng trains 300 people, it will be a good alternative to the power of the Golden Triangle. After that, the protagonist told his rival that if he could do it in three months, he would help him with the rest. Cheng replied in agreement. Wang told the guy sternly that he would not touch Cheng Kongmei this time. The prisoner was very surprised. He asked the protagonist how he knew his second uncle. The protagonist replied to the interlocutor that he had his own connections and ways. The next time Wang dealt with Cheng Kai Mei, it would be a good idea for him to inherit the Mei Long group. Cheng's boyfriend was very angry. He wanted to shout something to the protagonist. Van calmly replied to his interlocutor that he would not be frightened by him. The protagonist told the guy that he saw ambition, ferocity, and desire in his eyes. Cheng turned around and headed for the exit. He told the protagonist that he would do whatever he told him to do. After that, Van went back to the house where he lived with his girlfriend Shishi. The woman she was talking to was very unhappy. She asked angrily to the guy sitting on the sofa, Is he letting people out again? Van reminded the girl that she herself had given him permission to do whatever he wanted with his prisoner. After that, the interviewee calmed down and sat down on the sofa. She asked the guy what he had found out. He said that he had detained Chung Kong Mei of the Meilong group. Shishi was really scared. She realized that the hitman had been hired to kidnap her. The girlfriend came up behind the girl and asked with a chuckle, Why would a Meilong group kidnap a Shishi? She suggested that the group's boss might have a fetish for small breasts. Shishi got angry at her friend Han's words and threw her aside with a strong punch. The girl said judiciously that her Shangguan family would enter the Malong group industry this year. That's why Chung Kai Mei's boss wanted to capture her to threaten her father. Shi Shu angrily shouted that the boss used devious methods. She added that she should have demanded the death of Chung Kai Mei back at the supermarket. The protagonist asked with interest to the interlocutor what she was going to do. The girl replied that there would be a banquet tomorrow and a lot of famous people from China would be there. It is expected that there will be children of celebrities. Han ran up. She shouted happily that she also wanted to come to the banquet. She suggested that she should also call Sheng Pei's girlfriend. Shi Shi replied that Sheng Pei's girlfriend would be busy tomorrow. She told her interlocutor not to go with them. Khan grabbed her girlfriend's hand and said excitedly that there would be lots of handsome boys at the banquet tomorrow, and she wanted to go. After that, Khan snatched the protagonist by the hand and told him to let her go along with them. Van didn't know what to say to his interlocutor. He realized that he was a regular bodyguard and couldn't decide whether to go to the banquet or not. Shi Shi told her friend cheerfully that she would take her to the banquet and asked that the Khan not dishonor her. She was very happy that Shi Shi had agreed to take her. She asked where the banquet would be tomorrow. The girl excitedly said that the big banquets are held at the Tiangong International Club. The protagonist thought about it. He was interested in the fact that the gala would be held at the Tangong International Club. In the evening, a lavish banquet was held at the International Club in Tungong. There were many guests. Some of the guys didn't understand why on earth Shangguan Shishi had come here. They remembered that the girl had never come to an event like this before. One of the guys asked what kind of stranger was accompanying Shishi. The girl with a glass of wine in her hands thanked Uncle Chung. She said she would pass on his words to her father. Chung Kang Mei was the boss of the Meilong group. He told the girl that she had become very beautiful and kind. He asked Shishi who is the guy behind her. The protagonist, standing with a glass in his hand, greeted the man and gave his name. He said that he had come from the United States. Mr. Cheng was puzzled by the protagonist's answer. He didn't respond to the guy's handshake. Shi Shi told man that Yurong International would soon enter the bioenergy industry. 
She warned him to get ready so that the blow to Chung's company would not be very strong. Mr. Chung replied that Mei Long has always been a leader in the white energy industry, so there is nothing that a layman can do for them. The man added that young people should not be naive, otherwise they will get hurt. The girl was very much taken aback. The main character put his hand on his girlfriend's shoulder to comfort her. Van said judiciously that even if the young people fail, they have room to grow further. The guy added that some old people have brains filled with indecent things. The man got very angry. He asked the protagonist unhappily what the man meant. The guy said calmly to Boss Chung that let peace be better, or the scratch on his arm could get worse. Mr. Chung raised his hand with consternation and looked at it. He couldn't understand when the guy attacked him with poison. The man remembered the day after which his arm had begun to ache and itch. Wang said calmly to the interlocutor that the recording from his office could get on the internet and the man would become famous. Shi Shi was surprised. She couldn't understand when her friend started working against Chung Kang Mei. Mr. Chung, after a brief pause, asked the protagonist what he wants. Van put the glass on the tray and told the man that everything in this world has a price. The boy said he could give the man the videotape and the antidote. Mr. Chung offered the protagonist to give him 10% of Mei Long Group shares. Van looked carefully at the wine in his glass. He told the man that with a 10% stake, the annual dividend could be as high as several billion. Afterward, the protagonist took his girlfriend's hands and told the interviewer that it didn't compare to his life. The man stopped the protagonist and asked what the man wanted from him. Wang replied to the interlocutor that Mr. Chang owed him 10% of the stock for the videotape and 10% for his life. The man was very much taken aback by such demands. He even dropped his glass in frustration. The man accused the protagonist of blackmailing him. He added that he would denounce Van. The protagonist replied to his interlocutor that if he denounced him, he would tell him later how it really was. The man realized that there was no way he could resist the protagonist's demands. He agreed to 20%. Wang told the interlocutor that he should transfer 20% for Yurong International Firm for Shangun Shu Shu Girl. The interlocutor angrily grabbed the guy and shouted that the owner of 20% of the shares would be the second shareholder of the Meilong company. Wang told the man that he could kill him and then try to find someone to invent an antidote. The guy added that he had created a special computer program. If he didn't return in 10 hours, the video of Chung would go online. The man realized it was useless for him to resist. He let go of the protagonist's clothes. Mr. Chung promised his interlocutor that he would definitely keep his word. Shi Shi told man that honest business is the best. She added that tomorrow night she would come with her father to sign the stock transfer right. The girl thanked her friend for what he had done for her Shangguan family. Van replied to the interviewee that there was nothing to thank him for. The girl asked the guy why he was doing so much to help her. Shi Shi looked excitedly at the guy and asked, Does he really like her that much? The main character excitedly asked his girlfriend, Why would he like her? Shi Shi looked at her interlocutor romantically and said that she was beautiful and understood others well. Van very rudely replied to his girlfriend that she couldn't understand others at all. The main character told the distraught girl that a wife should be simple and gentle, so Shi Shi is not suitable for him. Shi Shi became very angry. She irritably wanted to tell off the main character already. At that time, a Han girl came running up. She shouted to the protagonist that he was able to defeat Chung Kang Mei and teach him a lesson. The excited girl told the guy that she had just put Chili's water in the new van drinks. She asked the protagonist if she looked like him now. There were a few guests standing nearby. A guy told young Master Su that Wang Zheng is not an easy guy. They should be wary. Su replied that he was investigating the Wang family from the state of Philadelphia. They really have a lot of influence in the USA. The guy said thoughtfully that the members of the Van family are very mysterious and rarely show up. Their financial groups are controlled by foreigners. The interlocutor said that Master Su never learned anything about Wang Zheng's real identity. The guy looked down at the people. He suggested to his interlocutor to go down and see what was going on. The guy said that Master Su could have already hired someone to test it. He added that they would be spectators. Su looked happily at his interlocutor and said he agreed. To himself, the guy thought deeply. He didn't understand why did the Shi Shi girl appear so suddenly. The guests couldn't understand where the main character came from and why the Shangguan girl was so friendly with him. Someone said that the guy was lucky with the opposite sex. At that time, a purple-haired guest appeared and approached the Zhang girl. She asked her interlocutor why she was no longer fooling around with the young master, but had chosen a handsome young man. The girlfriend told the protagonist that Sun Hai Sing, who was Mr. Sun's granddaughter, had approached them. The girlfriend asked the protagonist to socialize with the guest. The girl turned to Miss Song and said that she was only Wang Zhen's girlfriend. She added that she had always respected young Master Su without any hidden thoughts. Song looked at the protagonist and told the Zhang girl that she knew how to choose her companions. The main character thought that the girl across from him couldn't see well. He couldn't believe he looked 20 years old.
Girl Zhang told her interlocutor menacingly to watch her tongue in public. Zhang said that young Master Su is very cold to Miss Sun's attempts to get to know him. The girl rudely told the surprised dream interlocutor that she was purposely trying to look stupid in front of people. Zhang told a flustered Miss Dream that her appearance made people feel uncomfortable. Song angrily shouted to her interlocutor Zhang that she had grown up without a mother and had no right to lecture her. The dream girl was standing in the center of the hall. The people around her were very excited. The girl told the protagonist that the dream didn't need to remind Zhang of her dead mother. The protagonist was watching carefully. He told his interlocutor to keep quiet. Zhang was very much pissed off. A violent shiver ran through her body. At this time, the main character walked up to the girl and put his hand on her shoulder reassuringly. Zhang turned around and excitedly called out to the main character. She felt calmer. The protagonist said judiciously that some people, though educated by their parents, behave like savages. Van asked sternly to Miss Sleep, who had taught her such wild manners as a Neanderthal. The girl was very angry. She was very affected by the main character's words. The girl ran up and grabbed a glass with a drink from the tray. The waiter got very excited. After that, the angry sleeper spat out the contents of the glass in the direction of the protagonist. Van bounced to the side very quickly. As a result, the drink from the glass flew towards Shishi. The dream girl got really scared and excited after what she did. She even dropped the glass. Sleep was very frightened. She looked at Shishi and wanted to say words of excuse. The girlfriend wanted to help her Shangguan acquaintance. She looked around for a napkin. The girl angrily demanded the dream as soon as possible to apologize. The girl turned around and wanted to leave. At this time, the main character walked over and picked up the shards of glass that were lying there. Van picked up a small glass and decided to use it against the girl. The protagonist launched the glass in the direction of the dream with an apt and forceful motion. A flying piece of glass very accurately and neatly caught the dress on the girl's shoulder. Sleep was very much frightened and ashamed. She grabbed the dress with her hands and held it against her. After that, the guest turned around and started to leave. The guy on the balcony said that after this kind of embarrassment, Sun Hai Singh will not be able to return to the Asu family again in the future. The guy thought the protagonist had embarrassed Miss Dream's family and self-esteem and cut off all avenues of retreat. The guest looked at Wang Zhen and realized that he was a ruthless man. The protagonist was serving a drink to his girlfriend at this time. Han handed her friend a napkin. She told Shi Xu to calm down for starters. Zhang told her friends that today's incident started because of her. She said that she might even compensate something for Shi Xi. Shi Xi told her interlocutor that today's incident was not her fault, but Sun Hai Sings. Zhang said very excitedly to her friend that she was like a sister to her. The girl asked the protagonist, so why did the protagonist deviate and interfere with Shangguan Shi Xi? Van replied very simply that if he hadn't moved, the red wine would have gotten on his face. Zhang told her friend that he might have previously intended to protect her on purpose through Shangguan Shi Xu. The girl told her interlocutor that she wanted to thank him. Van told the interviewer that he had helped her, but only the closeness with Shi Shi played a big role. At this time, a guy came up and called out to Min Qi. The girl replied to young Master Su that she was fine thanks to Wang Zheng. The interlocutor with a glass in his hand calmly told the girl that he would deal with Sun Hai Sing later. The protagonist asked the guy why he didn't deal with the dream now. Su was very surprised by such a question. Van told the interlocutor that he didn't show up when Miss Sun was looking for trouble. He asked what kind of subterfuge was Miss Su weaving. Young Master Su fell silent. He was stunned and didn't know what to answer. Some girl came running up from the side. She asked the protagonist why he was standing with her brother. The boys were very surprised. The two of them turned around at the same time and looked at the guest. The stranger waved hello to the protagonist and said her name was Su Huang Huang. The main character looked at the girl with surprise and disbelief. He couldn't remember her at all. Wan remembered that he had seen the person he was talking to on the train. Her name was Su Hang Huang and she was studying at a medical university. The protagonist cheerfully told the girl that she was the Su Huang Huan of the train at which time the guest came up and grabbed her brother's arm from behind. Su girl pointed her brother to the protagonist and said she met him on the train from Ichang to the capital. The guy thought for a moment. He couldn't believe that the heir to a rich Van family could ride a train in tattered clothes. Su grabbed the protagonist's hand and said she wanted to thank him and take him out to dinner. Su guy said that Wang Xiaoyun should know where Li Xin's estate was. He added that they should be grateful to Wang Xiao for Huang Wang's benevolence. The main character told his interlocutors that he was busy at the moment and the meeting should be postponed to the next time. He said goodbye. After that, Van turned around and started to walk out of the banquet. Everyone was looking at him. They could not believe that the young Master Su had invited the protagonist to his Li Xin estate. The Su family had never let anyone from the outside in before. Van walked and thought confidently to himself that sooner or later he would come and destroy the Li Xin estate. The protagonist walked out of the luxury building and got into his car. 
Van thought he couldn't be calm when he heard about the L.I. Blue Manor. He decided to avenge his fallen brethren in this way. The main character recalled how he ran to his commander and said that the Esu family faction in Li Shin Manor is trying to capture the members of the Dragon Scales. The guy added that they shouldn't let them do that. The fighter kept firing. He yelled to the protagonist to leave him alone and leave quickly. The protagonist was very much crushed. He did not understand why they were betrayed for selfish ends. Eventually, the Dragon Scales were trapped. He was distracted from his memories by a girl. She called his name. Van replied to his girlfriend that he was fine. He asked, should we go back to Tian Pine Villa? The female companion from the back seat abruptly suggested to the guy that he go to a bar. She said she had never been there. Shi Shi told Xiao Yanyi's interlocutor that the protagonist is not in a good condition, so it is better not to go to the bar now. Van said cheerfully to the conversationalists that everything was fine, and they would be going to the bar now. Then the guy rolled the car out of the parking lot and they all drove around town. Van and his companions were rushing in an automobile to the place of entertainment. Inside the bar in Zero Entertainment City, there were many guests. They were all having fun dancing and relaxing. Han Girl told her friend, sitting on the couch, that Zero Entertainment City sounded familiar to her. Shi Shi replied that the place was run by a man with whom she had already had a conflict. The Con Girl excitedly shouted to the interlocutor that she remembered who she was talking about. Two waiters came up. They brought bouquets of flowers. The guys told the girls that it was a gift for them from their young master. Shi Shi replied to the waiters that their young master had very good taste. At that time, the main character came up. He took the bouquets of flowers from the hands of the surprised waiters. Van tossed the flowers aside. He told the waiters to give something to the young gentleman. The guests on the dance floor were very surprised when they saw the flying flowers. They thought it was part of the show. Wang told the interlocutors to Chiang Dong Feng, come in person if he wants to give flowers. He also added that the girls on the couch are already occupied. The guy was sitting behind the counter. He was very angry when he saw the protagonist. He banged his wounded hand on the table with all his might. The guy was pissed. Hitting his wounded hand on the table hurt him even more. The young man clutched his bandaged arm with his healthy hand. He was thinking about something. The guy recalled how not too long ago he'd been stabbed in the arm. Afterward, the guy commanded the waiter to Lin Shi to bring the team he coached to him. Others should find out what is the real strength of the Entertainment City group. A group of armed bandits entered the room. The leader angrily asked, Where is Wang Zheng? The guests on the dance floor got excited and scared. They decided to scatter. The bandits stood and waited patiently for everyone to run out of the room. The girlfriend told the protagonist that the bandits had come for him. She asked if she should call Lao Khan and ask for help. He replied that he could handle it himself. Van said calmly to the uninvited guests that he hoped they had come here to drink and party, not to fight. The main character was looking at a group of armed bandits. He said he didn't feel like maiming them. The leader angrily shouted to his subordinates to beat the protagonist to death. The boy commanded menacingly to the bandits to run forward. A huge number of gun-toting militants were running at full speed towards Wang. The protagonist calmly told his excited companions to wait for him here. Then Van, with a very quick and dexterous movement, threw the bottle in the direction of the intruders who were running at him. A flying bottle at full speed struck the first gunman dead. The bandits were a little scared and hesitated because they saw their accomplice lying on the floor covered in blood. Van saw their leader among the crowd. He noticed him immediately. Van looked at the ringleader and realized that he seemed stronger than the rest of the fighters. The protagonist then swung the bottle around in a powerful motion to attack the attackers with it. A large bottle at breakneck speed straight into a crowd of thugs. The ringleader did not flinch in the least. He smashed the bottle with a very quick and sharp kick of his foot. Van was very quick with his tags and powerful punches to disarm the people around him. The protagonist quickly neutralized all the militants. Only the leader was left in front of him. The ringleader looked excitedly at his rival and shouted that he was coming. The thug tried to take his opponent down with a leg kick. Van just blocked it with his arm. The guy was very worried. He knew that a shadow whip fighter could knock out a heavyweight with a single punch. He didn't understand how Van was able to block such a powerful punch. Shadow Whip was very angry. He couldn't understand how his opponent was fighting him off. The fighter then grabbed his arm. He prepared to continue his attack. Shadow Whip looked at the protagonist and realized that he had anticipated his actions. Van calmly dodging his opponent's strikes. He was telling the fighter that he was making a lot of unnecessary movements. The protagonist stopped the punch with his arm very quickly with a block. Shadow Whip didn't understand how his opponent was fending off blows so quickly. The protagonist looked at the fighter cheerfully and said he could teach him more. The fighter swung around to hit the head hero. He said the van should convince him. The protagonist calmly stopped his opponent's punch. He said that he could improve his technique. Van pulled his opponent's arm to the side in a very calm motion. The protagonist grabbed the fighter by the throat and asked, Does he agree? Shadow Whip replied that there was no way he would agree. 
Van kicked his opponent with a swinging leg. He yelled for him to find him if he changed his mind. The fighter activated a skill called Blue Sea Dragon Double Strike. Van noticed in time the threatening movement of his opponent and dodged. The fighter swung around for another attack. He shouted that he still hadn't given up. The protagonist told his opponent it was time to end the dance and kicked him. From the powerful blow, the fighter flew far to the side and banged against the wall. The infuriated Shadow Whip didn't understand how it could be that he couldn't see his opponent's movements. Van then turned to his old acquaintance and asked the latter, Is today a good day to have a scuffle? The pissed off guy wanted to say something to the main character, at which time there was a stylish knock on the door. The guy was surprised. A huge number of fighters in white t-shirts came into the room. The guests stood silent. They all wore white t-shirts and were armed. They waited for instructions. The guy was surprised. He realized that he was facing members of an underground fraternity along with the ringleader. The ringleader angrily ordered all his subordinates to destroy everything. The militants amicably told Big Brother that they do everything for him. And then the guy started tearing it up inside the bar without a second thought. The fighter ran outside following the protagonist and asked him to wait. Shadow Whip asked the guy, can he really make him three times stronger? The protagonist told the fighter that he would do all that he had promised. He said that the interlocutor must decide whether he should continue to follow Chung Dong Feng or follow him. The fighter said he just wants to perfect everything to the level of the main character so he can then do whatever he wants. The protagonist seriously asked the fighter if he wanted to kill or wreak havoc. Shadow Whip said seriously, it all depends on what the question is. Van put a hand on his interlocutor's shoulder and said that he would put him in the hands of someone who would help improve his kung fu. Afterward, the protagonist returned home, where he lived with his girlfriend. A woman called him and said excitedly that something bad had happened to him. He was pumping his arm with a dumbbell at the time. The girl was sitting in the car. She said that her mother and the police came to her. The police then twisted her. The guy replied to the interlocutor that she would be fine. The girl asked again for the protagonist's help. After that, the protagonist took the phone in his hand and called a familiar Min Hao. Wang asked that Min Hao help him find out where Zhu Feng from Capital University was. He also gave the license plate number. The protagonist put the dumbbells on the table. He was expecting a return phone call. The guy's phone rang. He immediately looked at the new information. Wang was very happy with the information he received in the phone. The guy said that for Zhu Feng and Zhu Qihua was tired of the quiet life. The protagonist climbed the stairs and asked if his girlfriend could give him a whip and a pair of pantyhose. A woman was returning to her home in a large mansion. Her son was waiting for her. The landlady opened the door and went inside. She was feeling very unhappy. The woman angrily said that she had been sprayed with some kind of nasty stuff that put her in the hospital for an hour. The mistress was very frightened when she saw her son Zhu Feng in front of her. The boy was hanging upside down tied up. The woman, frightened, asked her son how he got there. A mother rushed to her son and shouted that she was going to save him now. Suddenly, the landlady felt that she could no longer move from her seat. The woman slumped abruptly and couldn't even get to her feet anymore. The landlady was surprised. She could not understand why she could no longer move. Van explained to the interviewee that she was glued to the floor with glue. Now the woman can't escape. The landlady saw before her a stranger with a mask of black tights over his head. The masked protagonist told the interviewer he liked mature women, but definitely not her. After which the guy taped the terrified woman's mouth so she wouldn't scream. Van got to his feet and pulled out his whip. He said he had a business to finish. The protagonist whipped the dangling guy with the whip. He screamed really loud. Van told the woman that because of her arrogance, she would not understand how other people feel who suffer from their petty desires. The protagonist swung the whip at the dangling guy again. He told the woman that it was unfortunate that she had met him today. Van held the whip in his hands. He told the interviewer that she would feel the pain and helplessness on her own. The protagonist took another swipe at the dangling guy. He yelled to the woman that even if he did something terrible, it would be revenge at worst. The mother was very much frightened. The main character explained that her son had hurt the girl, who was also someone's daughter. Van continued to beat the dangling victim with the whip. He told the mother that he would allow her to lecture his son. Then the main character cut the rope and the guy fell to the floor. The woman was very frightened. She couldn't say anything and was lying on the floor. Van told the landlady that all this was just the beginning. He demanded of her that her husband retire before he found him. The main character turned around and headed for the exit. He told the woman that he wouldn't mind if her husband died. After that, the protagonist decided to return to the Shangguan residence. Sheng Pei was sitting on the internet reading the news. It reported about the college students who stand up for the injured girl. The female interlocutor asked the protagonist, why didn't he, when he came to Zhu's house, let them release Liu Xu? In doing so, the protagonist encouraged the students to protest. Wang explained to Shei Pei that, given the events of the day, he could not guarantee that Liu Xu would be all right. The girl could be harassed and even harmed. There are many dirty deeds that Zhu Qihua is behind. 
The guy told the interviewer that he didn't even know who was behind Ji Kihua. The girl asked him why he was so interested in the case. The protagonist finished his coffee and put the cup on the table. He decided to explain everything to his interlocutor. Van told the girl that there are things that have something to do with her and her friends, but it's too early for them to know. After that, the protagonist silently turned around and walked towards the door. Sheng Pei watched him. She looked after her friend and thought about what he had said. At this time, inside Zhu's residence, the director was communicating with his subordinate. General Secretary Zhu was very angry. He banged his laptop irritably on the table. Subordinate asked the principal whether Capital Teacher Training University should be sued for defamation. The man angrily asked the guy who would be held responsible now. Secretary Zhu called his subordinates a bunch of useless idiots. He decided to call someone. The man called his friend and greeted him warmly. The interlocutor replied to Secretary Zhu that he could not help him, as everyone would realize that he was working for him. Secretary Zhu pleaded. He told his interlocutor that he badly needed help once more. The interlocutor then explained to the man that he could protect him, but that he would have to do something for him in the future. The protagonist was with his girlfriends at the Shangguan residence. A Han girl ran into the hall with a phone. She shouted to her friends in fear that everything was gone. Shisha asked excitedly to her girlfriend to explain what was already missing. Han showed her friends her phone. She explained that the network was completely missing Chernuha on Zhu Kihua. Sheng Pei said judiciously, the person behind Zhu Kihua showed himself. The protagonist thoughtfully asked, How many people in China can change the data in all the media in an instant? Shishu interrogated his interlocutor. What did he say? Van stood up and told the girl that he was just expressing his thoughts out loud. The protagonist wondered to himself how he would repay Kihua for the help from the Su family. The main character arrived at the police station. He was waiting there for a girl. Van was standing near the entrance to the police station next to his car. He still had to wait. Very soon a skinny girl in a yellow dress came out of the police station. The sad girl was very scared. She could hardly hold back her tears. The protagonist saw through an overflow of emotion. His girlfriend cried. After that, the girl saw the guy and calmed down. She went towards him. The girlfriend asked the protagonist, Why didn't Sheng Fei come? Wang told the interlocutor that Sheng's girlfriend was a little busy. The boyfriend told the interlocutor that she was crying like a baby. The girlfriend explained that she had tears of joy. She asked Wang Zheng how could she thank him. Van cheerfully told his girlfriend not to offer him her body. The main character opened doors for his girlfriend. He said he wasn't the only one to thank. Now it's time to celebrate the safe return of the girlfriend. The passenger asked the main character what he had done to Zhu Feng. The guy replied to the girl that people like Zhu Feng would not do anything if they were given a good scare. A female passenger asked the driver if he had fought with Zhu Feng. The main character replied that it would be scary to look at Zhu now. Then the protagonist and his companion arrived at the Blue Oyster Bar. The girl said with a smile to the protagonist that he was very sinister. The two of them sat together at a table. Van with a smile asked his girlfriend why she thought he was sinister. The girlfriend told the main character that he beat Zhu Feng's ass and now he can only sleep on his stomach. Wang cheerfully replied to the interlocutor at the table that it was unlikely that Zhu now could even stand. At that time, the phone rang. The protagonist looked up and noticed that it was Shang Guan Shishu calling him. A frightened Shishi girl told the protagonist over the phone that her father was very ill. She asked Van to come back as soon as possible. The protagonist got up from the table. He told the person he was talking to that he had to leave urgently and that she should go home. The protagonist arrived by car at the house where he lived with his girlfriend. Van couldn't park safely. Suddenly, a yellow race car blocked his way. Shangguan Sani was driving the yellow car. He shouted to the protagonist to watch where he was going. Wang grudgingly realized that he was seeing Shangguan brother's second son Jia Zheng in front of him. The main character saw the inside of the building was full of people. He noticed a red-haired woman. The woman's name was Shangguan Tianyu. She grudgingly asked the guy who he was. The woman turned and looked after the protagonist. Van ignored her completely. Afterward, Tianyu told the boy that the Shangguan family did not need help and to leave. Wang turned around and calmly said that he was the bodyguard of Shangguan Shishi. Guests around scornfully asked the protagonist, What on earth is he doing here? The woman grudgingly told the guy that if he was a security guard, he should wait outside with the drivers. At that time, the Shishu girl came running in. She greeted the protagonist and told him to get up quickly. That's when Sani's boyfriend walked in. He asked Shishi, Did she really think her bodyguard could cure his uncle? The woman turned to the girl and said that outsiders not from the Shuangguan family are not allowed to be here. Their wealth cannot fall into the hands of outsiders. The girl angrily shouted to her interlocutors that her father was sick and they were all waiting for him to die. She shouted once more for Wang Jie to go upstairs. The main character walked into the bedroom with his girlfriend. He saw a man lying unconscious on the bed. 
Shishi told her friend excitedly that the best doctors in the country had come to see them. They had taken blood for analysis, but had not told the results. Van approached the lying patient. He carefully measured the man's pulse. Van said that the patient's pulse was normal, but his eyes were closed, as if he were unconscious. He asked what happened to the man. Shangguan Jeling came in. He said he would pay the protagonist a hundred million dollars if he diagnosed Jia Zheng. She pleaded with her friend. She demanded that he tell her what had happened to her father. The main character looked at his girlfriend and said her father could have been poisoned. The girl was very much taken aback. She could not understand how her father could have been sent away. Van replied to his girlfriend that he had never encountered such symptoms before. He could not determine what toxin had poisoned the interviewee's father. Jia Ling asked with interest to the protagonist, Why is the protagonist so confident? The guy told the man that he trusted his intuition. Van took the needle from the box, after which the protagonist walked over and pricked the arm of the lying patient with a needle. Jia Ling accused the girl of attracting an irresponsible doctor who does not know what to treat a patient for. A Shishu told her uncle that he reacted very coldly to everything. She asked, Is he really looking forward to her father's death so much? A man came into the bedroom. He asked unhappily, Why is the room so noisy? The new guest was Shaguan Jiaki. He demanded of the interlocutors that they inform him about the convening of the board of directors. The management of the company would be transferred during the owner's serious illness. The man asked the girl if she would represent her father. She she told her uncle that her father's not dead yet, and everyone's already thinking about dividing up the estate. Jiaki said grudgingly to his interlocutor for using a rude tone towards elders. After that, all the guests turned around and started to leave the bedroom. They were talking about something of their own. Shishu was very unhappy. She looked at the departing guests in silence. Tears welled up in the girl's eyes. She wanted to save her dying father. Van walked up to his girlfriend and hugged her. He said he would help heal her father. On a clear afternoon, there was a meeting in the corporate building. There were a lot of people. All participants of the meeting gathered in a special meeting room. The woman told the girl that even if there was a vote, her uncle had an advantage. One of the participants said that the Shushi girl is very greedy and wants to become the head of the family at a young age. The girl said excitedly to her interlocutors. The man told the girl that it was not known whether her father would return at all. He suggested not wasting time in voting. Around the table sat the participants of the meeting. At this time, the main character came to the door. He decided to enter the meeting. Van confidently opened the door and looked at the people at the table with interest. Without any invitation, the protagonist went inside and approached the people. Shisha girl's mood improved. She looked hopefully at the protagonist. A participant in the meeting menacingly demanded that security be called immediately. Wang told the audience that he was the bodyguard of Shangguan Shishi. A bodyguard can't let his employer down. The guy added that he won't let the girl shed another tear. The man ordered the guards to get the protagonist out quickly. The protagonist got angry. He plunged a huge knife into the table. The van looked carefully around at everyone present and told them not to doubt his words. Shishi said that the decision is made during her father's illness, so she wants to be in charge of all the company's affairs. The girl said that today's board of directors is finished. The man was very much surprised. He didn't expect such a harsh reaction from the girl. After that, all the participants of the meeting turned around and started to leave. Shishi looked after them. The girl thankfully told the protagonist that he had pushed the meeting hard. She added that they were all her relatives. Van told the interviewer that none of the participants would have gone to her side. The guy added that the business world can be cruel. Shishi told the guy that he's the best and he helps her a lot and she's biased against him. Van stood up and said he couldn't leave a woman with an irregular menstrual cycle. The girl was very angry. She shouted at her companion that she was going to kill him. She sat at her desk and read the documents. She realized that if she wanted to run the company, she had to show results as soon as possible. The girl informed her friend that her grandfather had retired many years ago. Now her father had a strange illness. She added that she needed help from Wang Jen. The main character remembered that the head of the company named Shangguan Yingzhan resigned after announcing the succession of his third son. Now the company has reached really great heights. In the end, the others put pressure on the girl Shishi. Wang told the interviewer that the first time he met Shipei, Ta was poisoned. This time, Shishi's father was poisoned. The guy added that he needs to think and put all the pieces in the puzzle together. He added that the girl will be protected by Zhang Yong. Shishi realized that there was some kind of agreement between the protagonist and her father. She thanked the protagonist. With that, Van stood up from the table and headed for the exit of the meeting room. The girl jumped up and called out to the main character. The guy turned to her. Shishi told Bath that if he needed the support of her family and company in the future, she would always help him. She added that she hoped her father would be cured. Van waved his hand at his interlocutor. He said he even felt uncomfortable. The protagonist promised his girlfriend that he would help cure her menstrual pain. 
Shi Shi told her friend that she didn't have the strength to be mad at him anymore. There were a lot of people at the city airport. There was a flight of guests arriving. The girl Katie, accompanied by her companions in black suits, was walking through the airport hall. Next to her was Chang Dong. The tourist looked at the stranger in the suit and said he had a handsome face like Keanu Reeves. He added, This could be a movie like The Matrix. The stranger in the suit suddenly walked sharply toward the guy with the backpack. The tourist was frightened. Katie told Kian not to be so harsh for he scared the boy. Whereupon the guest stopped and looked up carefully in front of him. Chang shouted menacingly to China that his predator was finally back. The guy was standing by the car smoking. He was looking at the arriving guests carefully. Suddenly the guy recognized someone from the airport. He got excited. An excited boy ran to the Qian and excitedly called him brother. Katie asked unhappily to Qian, Is the guy who ran up as his brother? The boy was very happy to see his brother. He said happily that he was finally back. Chiang sternly told his interlocutor that he was not happy about his return. He added that the boy's father's business had gone downhill. The interlocutor frightenedly excused himself and said it was all his fault. He added that his father had told him to learn from Chiang how to do business. Chiang sternly replied to his interlocutor that he was going to university in Australia. The guy leaves tomorrow. The boy was very much surprised and disappointed. He asked Qian, Does he really want to go against his father's will? The man said angrily that there was no way his father could influence or change his decision. The boy was not happy. He angrily asked his brother, Why does he decide everything for him? Chiang replied that he would not explain anything. He added that if his brother ran away, he might not even show up at home. The woman told Chan that he had a heart of ice. She asked the man, Does he not feel sorry for his own brother? The man sternly told Katie to stay out of his family's business. He said that he was only helping at the director's request. The woman asked with a smile at Qian when he wanted to meet with their allies in China. The man replied that their allies were merely bargaining chips to accomplish the goal. Kathy told the interviewer that he was very confident. She added that she wouldn't want to see his appearance in her life. The man turned around and walked away. He told the woman that after she got to the city, there were many things waiting for her that would make her happy. Qian told his companions that they needed to visit their old friend first. After that, Katie arrived at the nightclub in a car accompanied by her companions. Chiang got out of the car and shouted joyfully that he had finally returned today. Inside the club, it was a lot of fun. There were a lot of young people on the dance floor. The club guests were very surprised when Katie walked past them accompanied by her security guards in black. Chiang turned around and shouted menacingly to the club guests to move away. The guards with glasses were walking and looking around carefully. One of them noticed the waiter. The guards stopped next to the waiter. The waiter got really scared. After that, the bodyguard had no problem picking the guy up with his arms and lifting him above his head. Then the security guard threw the waiter to the side with a flying kick. The waiter flew full speed into the wine cabinet. The guy hit the liquor cabinet and fell to the ground. There were bottles all over the place. The guests from the club were very frightened. They ran screaming towards the exit. The manager of the nightclub, Huang Bo, appeared. He went towards the uninvited guests. The manager got angry. He swung his arm to hit one of the bodyguards. Kathy watched her Huang Bo. She said with a chuckle that the one is a brave man. The manager swung his fist at his opponent's stomach. He calmly stood still. The bodyguard was unaffected by the blow. He looked calmly at his opponent. Then the guard calmly swung around and hit the manager with all his might. Huang Bo flew off to the side at full speed after a powerful punch. The battered manager was lying on the floor. He was coughing blood out of his mouth. At that time, Chiang approached Huang Bo. He put his foot on the boy's head. Chiang shouted for the manager to relay that Li Min Hao was no longer alone running the capital's underworld. After a while, another guy showed up. He looked at the lying manager with fear. A guest approached the lying Huang Bo. He couldn't even get up from the floor. The guy asked with great interest to the manager, What's going on now? Huang Bo pleaded with his friend. He shouted fearfully that he had failed him. The guy shouted to his subordinates to get the managers to the hospital immediately. He added that he wanted to pay back whoever beat up Huang Bo. Afterward, a friend decided to check on his manager, who ended up in the hospital. Li Min Hao sat on the chair beside the bed. He asked Huang Bo to give a detailed account of everything that had happened. The manager said that three men and a woman came into the establishment. One of the men hit him and his ribs were broken. Huang Bo relayed the words of one of his bodyguards that Li Min Hao was no longer alone in running the capital's underworld. The guy got excited because some foreign mastermind had actually come to visit them. Out loud, he promised the manager that he would avenge him. At that time, the Shishi girl and her girlfriend Han were in the corporation building. Khan asked her friend annoyingly, does the outfit suit her? She also suggested that her friend should go to a party with her tonight. She she asked her secretary to make a cage for her girlfriend and lock her in it. Her father called her. He suggested that the girl go on a blind date. The man told his daughter sternly not to argue. Otherwise, he would ask the mother to bring the Khan in person. The girl was very surprised. She shouted irritably to her father that he had gone mad. 
She added that she didn't want to go home. The man angrily told his daughter to be home by noon tomorrow. Otherwise, he promised to punish her. Han started shaking her girlfriend. She asked for Shishi to tell her what to do. Shishi calmly replied to her girlfriend to go out and meet a guy. They might like each other. The girl said fearfully that she had not yet had enough of a taste of life. She asked for Shishi to help her. The girlfriend told her friend that when she was in her teens, her father wanted to marry her to Shintian. Khan said grudgingly that her father had not let her go out since she was young. The girl excitedly said that on this blind date she would not be looking at the person she was talking to. The guy would have to be disappointed afterward. The main character was sitting in his room at home. He was busy studying a book. Van told himself that it would be good for him if he could get in touch with the old man. But he didn't know where the man had gone. Van remembered that the old man had asked him to be Shi Shi's bodyguard. He wasn't exactly sure if it had to do with destroying the dragon scales. The old man told the guy not to try to contact him. If there was a need to see him, he would let him know himself. Van slammed the book shut. He said to the old man to by no means die as he still needed an explanation. At that time, the door to the room clicked. The main character's girlfriends came in. Khan brought the guy a drink and a cup. She greeted him with a smile. Van said suspiciously to his girlfriend that she looked very strange and frightening. He asked her to explain what was wrong. The girl strained as much as possible to contain her emotions. She had a request for the protagonist. Van she came up behind the guy and said she wanted to give him a massage. Van agreed to his girlfriend's offer. He said he had some free time. She, she couldn't hold back her emotions. She looked at the main character and his girlfriend with laughter. Khan looked at the protagonist with excitement and said she needed help. After which the girl told her friend in detail what she wanted from him. Van was very much taken aback by his girlfriend's request. Han wanted him to pretend to be her boyfriend. The protagonist ended up saying no to his interlocutor. Han fearfully told the guy that her father insists on a blind date. She added that Van will just go with her, sit with her and leave. Van thought that if he went to the lair of the Khan family, his life would never be the same again. Shishi waved her hands to the side and showed the protagonist to make up his own mind. She shouted that if Wang didn't go with her, she'd say she was carrying his child. After that, Lao Han shoots the protagonist. Van told his girlfriend that this time he would go with her. He asked that she stop her father if he wanted to shoot him. At that time, guests arrived at the Khan family's mansion. He was receiving them. Su Bei Jiang told Man Han Yu that he had brought his son Su Min to see his daughter. Khan Tuo Su told the guests that he would be glad to give his beauty to such a young man. Su Min was sitting in a military uniform. He said he's been in love with a girl for a couple years. Zhang Yang King said that the girl has been good in the family since she was a child. Su Min's boyfriend should like her. The man drank coffee from his cup and said that if the marriage was consummated, their father would be very happy too. The woman was overjoyed. She said she wanted to name her daughter Mrs. Su. The marriage of the girl and Su Ming's boyfriend would help her get into China's number one political family. After that, the wife asked her husband why their daughter still hasn't shown up. She added that she wanted to call the girl. At that time, a dog barking was heard in the distance. The man said that the old man had returned with the dog. He added that the guests should be careful about the dog. An elderly man came through the door. He was leading a pedigree dog on a leash. The old man sat down and petted the dog. He said that the dog was not old but still very restless. The guy greeted his grandfather in a military manner and said his name was Su Min. The old man said cheerfully that Monster Su had a great-grandson. He added that the whole world was now in the guy's hands. The guest told the grandfather that his dog listens well to his master. It means that the old man has trained it well. Grandpa told me that the dog was a military dog and had been discharged from the special forces. He also said that the dog had stood up for him many times. The owner stroked his fur and showed everyone around him the scars on his dog's body. The boy asked with interest to Grandpa Khan, what is the name of his dog? The old man petted his pet and said they call it a dragon, while a race car came to a full stop in front of the house. The woman excitedly said that it was their daughter, nicknamed Starry Knight, who had arrived. Han opened the door to the room. She told her friend Wang Zheng to come in quickly, for everyone was waiting. The main character got very excited. He realized he was going to have to see a lot of people. The girl, along with her excited boyfriend, walked into the room. Han explained to her friend that her blind date boyfriend named Su Min is sitting on the couch next to him. His father is named Su Bei and is the deputy minister of national defense. A woman called her daughter by the nickname Starry Night and asked what was going on. Han in as calm a voice as possible told everyone present that her boyfriend was standing next to her. The protagonist greeted his girlfriend's parents. He added that he didn't have time to prepare a gift for them as he and Khan were traveling very fast here. The dragon dog was wary of strangers coming in. The dog looked at the protagonist with obvious distaste. He growled a little. After that, the dragon accelerated and ran with all his might towards Vanya. The old man looked at his pet with consternation. He did not understand this reaction of the dog. Then the dog barked at the protagonist in flight. 
Van barely had time to catch him. The girl was very frightened at the dog's behavior. She was worried about the guy. Su Min was also very much surprised. He could not understand why the dog ran at the guest. The main character recognized the dog. He called it a dragon. The dog licked the man happily. The main character remembered the dog. He used to train it and run with it. Van trained the dog himself personally in various tricks on the training ground. Was that the main character got a list of dead co-workers. The protagonist found the name of a dragon dog on a list of recent victims. He was very sad at the time. Van looked at the fully alive dog. He remembered that he thought it was dead. Grandpa looked closely at his pet and said that the dog's owner had already been found. The con girl was completely silent. She looked at her friend and the dog with interest. The Su Min guy, due to the very great solemnity of the moment, raised his hand in a military salute. Then the guy with his escort turned around and walked towards the exit. An old man came up and asked the protagonist excitedly, Was he in special forces? Van told his interlocutor with a smile that he was not only a special forces officer, but also a professional dog trainer. The guy apologized to those present and said he had to go. The dog whimpered. He put his paw on the guy, showing that he didn't want to leave him. The boy hugged the dog and said he'd come back to him. Van thought to himself that he'd get a dragon for himself someday. Van stood there thinking about something of his own. There was a girl next to him and she was full of feelings. After a short pause, the girl told her father very earnestly that she wished to join the army. The man asked his daughter, Is this really how she wants to avoid marriage? The girl replied very confidently that she was joining the army to avoid marriage. The father put his hand on the girl's head and told her that once she had made her decision, it was okay to leave. The man told the girl that they would first go to the military district for training and then they would go to the National Defense University. The main character sat in the office building with his girlfriend Shishi. The two of them. The girl excitedly said that she missed her friend Han. She wasn't sure if T.A. would be able to endure all the hard military training. The protagonist stood near a huge office window. He saw an evil corporation building standing nearby. The protagonist was thinking. He realized to himself that time was going by very fast. The guy standing at the window asked his girlfriend thoughtfully, Does she know Shangwan Yunxiao? The interlocutor interjected to her friend. Does he mean the eldest son of the Qi Shangguan family? The girl reported that the guy's family is indeed descended from a Shangguan ancestor. She added that Yong Xiao is as reserved as Shangguan senior. Sha Sha said that Yong Xiao had purchased land in the capital, where he built a small and profitable farm. The protagonist turned to his interlocutor and said all of this is commendable. Shi Shi insistently said that Shangguan did not respect the head of the family. Van told her that the second son of Sanya's was having a lavish party at the villa. He invited her to join him. The girl quickly tossed the pillow aside and shouted to her friend that she was okay to go. In the Shangguan family home, the boy was vacationing with his girlfriends. Suddenly, the master was distracted by the doorbell. He was very unhappy. The guy couldn't understand who could have come at such a moment. He yelled that he didn't want to see anyone. Then the master of the house went to the peephole to see who had come. The boy saw that his brother Shangguan Yunxiao was standing near the door. He was very excited. The master opened the door and asked his brother with astonishment, Why did he come here? Yun Xiao told his brother that he raised two rabbits and brought them here. He added that he also wanted to come to the party tonight. The guy told his brother that if he wanted something to eat, he'd send it to him directly. Yun Xiao said cheerfully, His hobby lies in such an aspect. The host looked at his brother and told him shyly that he had no particular preference. After that the guy smoked and sat himself down on the couch in the center of his lounge. The master informed his brother that the third uncle had fallen ill. He added that if the yellow-haired girl inherited the position of patriarch, he would feel worthless. Yong Xiao reported that the third uncle is still on treatment at home. He added that it was not easy for San Shu to bring the family to such a high level in the past years. He added that without San Shu, they would not have been able to receive so much dividends every year. The master told his brother that if he took the place of the patriarch, it would be wonderful. He would be able to elevate the family better than the San Shu had done. Yong Xiao replied that none of this was interesting to him. He asked his brother to instruct the cook to start preparing the food. The guest told his brother cheerfully to have his nannies join them. It would be more fun to eat that way. The host was very surprised that his brother called his girlfriend's babysitters, at which time the protagonist and his girlfriend drove up to the gates of the house in an automobile. Wang looked at the big building. He said that Shangguan lived alone in such a large villa. The girl looked at the villa and said excitedly that her brother must be busy. Van looked at the huge house and said that this kind of life really fascinated him. The woman asked the boy what he had in mind. Van said cheerfully to his girlfriend that he would be sure to think of something. The girl looked at the car and said that the guy had left the car at the door of their house last time. After that, the exit for other cars was blocked. Van pulled out a knife angrily. He told his girlfriend that he had been holding back for a very long time after the guy had pissed him off. 
Shi Shi saw another car. She shouted to her friend to wait. The girl said excitedly to her friend that Shang Guan Yunxiao had also come here. Wang replied to his girlfriend that the situation was getting more interesting. The protagonist reminded her girlfriend that when her father was lying in a deep coma, her cousins were laughing loudly in the living room. After which the guy swiftly and skillfully launched the knife in the direction of the car. The knife hit a car tire and punctured it. There was a loud hiss. And then Van went over to the car and used a knife to cut something out of it. The girl had a lot of fun. She was excited about what her friend was doing. When the master of the house came running out, he angrily asked the protagonist what he was doing. The guy angrily asked the Shangguan Shishu girl why doesn't she take care of her dog. The girl got very angry. She rudely demanded the guy to repeat his words. While the protagonist stood by the car and continued to carve something with a knife, an angry guy shouted to his interlocutor that her dog was dragging his car. He demanded that the Shishi pay him for a new car. The girl told the interlocutor unequivocally that she would not pay him. She asked that Wang Zhe wreck the car. The protagonist was very excited about the offer. He pulled out a huge hammer. Van then bumped the yellow race car and started smashing it. The master was very much frightened and angry. At that time, Yung Xiao appeared from behind the gate. The Yung Xiao guy looked at the girl and greeted her very happily. Shi Shi was excited when she saw her brother. She shouted for the protagonist to be come. The angry owner yelled to his brother that the girl had wrecked his car. Yung Xiao continued to discuss all the problems over a cup of tea. He added that he had brought some food from his farm. Shangguan Yun Xiao stretched out his hand and greeted the protagonist. He added that he really wanted to see bodyguard Shishi. The protagonist was pleased at such a word from his interlocutor. He tossed his hammer aside. Wang told the boy that he had heard a lot about his farm and would like to visit it. Yun Xiao told his interlocutor that it would be possible to go to his farm in the afternoon. The protagonist was surprised because of his interlocutor's continued indifference to wealth and power. After which the protagonist, accompanied by his girlfriend and two brothers, went inside the house. Van said cheerfully that there must be more than two girls in the room, judging by the smell. The girlfriend became very agitated. She didn't like her companion's words. After that, the protagonist, accompanied by his new acquaintances, sat at the table. There were many dishes. Wang ate his food quickly and persistently. Xu Xu advised his friend to eat more slowly or he would choke. The host looked at the protagonist and said he didn't understand. Where does such unculturedness come from? The guy told the Shishi girl that her dog was eating at the table. The van replied to his interlocutor that he was the best hunting dog. He told the boy afterwards not to be caught in his town. Yun Xiao told his brother to stop being rude. He offered the girl a taste of his rabbit. The protagonist is surprised to notice that the guy across from him is left-handed. Shi Shi told me that her older brother is left-handed. He was the best student in school. The main character got very agitated. He remembered that he hates people with high intelligence. Shi Shi sadly told me that her older brother had gone abroad to study and had failed the college entrance exam. Van told his girlfriend that he would really like to look at a large farm of tens of thousands of square meters. The host angrily asked the protagonist, Has the protagonist been abroad and visited that fictional city of Roanapur? The protagonist smiled happily at his interlocutor and said that he had been there. The host grudgingly replied to his interlocutor that no one would believe his words. Yun Xiao said that after traveling to other countries, he realized that there is nothing like home. He added that for him, Hauxia soil is the best. The van answered his companion cheerfully that the native land was always better. He asked the boy if he knew any weapons. Yun Xiao said that he used to have a passion for shooting, but he had little time because of his farm. So his interest in shooting had already faded. Van said cheerfully to the interviewer that his hands are calloused. That means the guy does everything alone. The host asked angrily to the protagonist, what could he possibly care about his brother? Yun Xiao replied that the farm was very big. He could not watch everything himself, so he hired a couple of people to help him. The guy suggested that they go to his farm. At that time, the main character finished his rabbit's foot. He put the bone on the table. Wang told his interlocutor that he liked the rabbit meat, so he would not refuse the offer. Yang Xiao replied to the protagonist that he would deliver more rabbits to him later in the car. A little later, the protagonist, accompanied by his new acquaintances, arrived in the countryside. Van stood beside the car next to his girlfriend and Yang Xiao's boyfriend. There was a farm next to them. Yun Xiao told his friends that more than 10,000 kilograms of vegetables ripen in this field every year. He added that the seeds are genetically modified, so the harvest is large and of high quality. Van looked around and around and said that when he got older, he would do the farming too. The protagonist, accompanied by his companions, paced the farm grounds. After that, people came up to a huge enclosure. Inside were some very vicious dogs. The Shishu girl said fearfully that the dogs in the enclosure were very scary. Wan asked his new friend, Does he like dog fighting? Yung Xiao replied, that he keeps fighting dogs for fun. The main character noticed that when the dogs saw Yun Xiao, they became immediately harmless. It seemed strange to him. 
Van remembered his army adventures. In the last battle of Dragon Scale, the sniper lefty was against him. He almost hit the protagonist. The protagonist realized that the guy in front of him was an accomplice of the Su family. It is the Young Xiao who is the sniper who almost hit him and prevented him from getting out of the trap. Suddenly, the girl's phone rang. The interlocutor demanded that Xie tell everyone that there would be an urgent meeting in an hour. Yun Xiao was very excited. He asked his sister apprehensively, what is going on? A girl excitedly reported that the company had a problem with the filters. Two dozen people were hurt and hospitalized. Yun Xiao told the girl to deal with it quickly, adding that the outcome of the case could affect the Shangguan family. Girl accompanied by the protagonist arrived at the company building very quickly. Xia told the meeting that they have been making water filters for almost 12 years. There has never been a problem before. She asked to be told what happened. The first assistant, named Wei Wentao, said that the filters had a broken mechanism for removing waste, so it began to accumulate. As a result, a couple of people were poisoned. He added that two children were among those poisoned. The girl asked excitedly to the assistant, What about the results? Wei said that the poisoning was caused by heavy metals in the water. So far, all efforts are being made to save people. For adults, the damage caused by the poisoning is not so great. Xia told the meeting participants that they should take it seriously. She added that their opponents had begun to act faster than they had anticipated. Wei asked her interlocutor, Does she have any suspicion who might be behind the poisoning? Xi Xi replied that she can't accuse someone without evidence, so she refrains from answering. After that, the girl stood up abruptly and banged her hands on the table. She wanted to say something important. Xia demanded that the information department provide her with a detailed count of the damage assessment for her. The girl told the participants that they should minimize any rumors and get to the bottom of the incident. Wei asked the girl, do they need to hire programmers to analyze information on large forums? Shishi -shi replied that they don't have proof of their innocence yet. For now they need to find any leads. After that they can confront all of this. The girl asked that Wei's assistant go with her to the press conference. The rest of us will go about our normal business. Shishi -shi bowed and told the meeting participants that only hard work would get them all out of this situation. The girl was making a statement to the media. Shi Shi said that her father is overseas, so she is holding a press conference on behalf of Jurong. The reporter sternly asked the girl, why did the Shangguan family send her instead of her father? The girl said that Meizen filters were put on the market many years ago and have been improved all the time. She added that these filters are the best. The journalist asked that the interlocutor explain what had happened. He asked, will Shia take responsibility for everything that happened? Shi Shi said that Jurong would not shirk responsibility for what happened. She explained that the cause of the poisoning was a breakdown in the waste discharge system. Reporter asked the girl, Does she really want to say her company was framed? He added that the facts say otherwise. There was a heated discussion among journalists. They did not quite like Shi Shi's answers. The girl said that tonight she will visit a factory that produces filter elements. She believes that all this will prove that they are not involved in the poisoning incident. The reporter asked the girl, would she be as calm if her parents and children had been poisoned? He added that the girl was evading responsibility. At that time, the main character entered the hall. He was watching carefully from the sidelines. Shishi -shi replied that she wanted to apologize to all customers on behalf of Jurong. She added that the firm does not shirk responsibility. The girl said that renowned specialists will examine the children. The reporter excitedly asked the girl, Will she be able to buy health for the injured? The protagonist watched the interview carefully. It was becoming increasingly unpleasant for him. Shi Shi told all the reporters that she wanted to explain everything again. The girl said that the company would take responsibility and would not shirk. A full explanation of what had happened would be given after all the circumstances had been clarified. Shi Shi promised that if it turns out that someone framed you wrong, the company will not leave that person alone. The girl told the interviewees that it was late and she had to visit the injured. She added that the press conference was ending. After the interview, the girl was traveling in an automobile accompanied by her companions. Shi Shi asked unhappily to the assistants, where did the guy who was pestering her with questions come from? Wei said the reporter's name is Cheng Bowen. His newspaper often publishes radical articles without evidence. Shi Shi grudgingly told her companions that she was really pissed off at the reporter. Wei reported that Cheng Bowen is a master of arts. He added that the guy has a lot of student debt. Van said that the reporter is making a lot of money now, but he's not talking about that. Wei said that in last year's issue, Chung Bowen also criticized one company because of the accident. As a result, that company's competitors became more popular and increased their sales for the month. Shi Shi replied thoughtfully that this once again proves that someone is trying to destroy their company. She added that Chen had already written the article and it would be published in the newspaper tomorrow. The protagonist assured his girlfriend that he would handle it all. He has good methods against guys like that. The girl remembered her friend's behavior last time at the meeting.
Van had plunged the knife into the table with a swing. She she told her friend with a smile not to kill anyone this time. Wei looked at the main character. It was hard for him to understand how a simple bodyguard could deal with such a situation. Van told his interlocutor not to worry. He added that they are already in the hospital and need to think about how to deal with the injured. The girl hesitated and sipped her drink from the can. She was finding it increasingly difficult to calm down. She she said thoughtfully that it was very difficult for her to be in charge. She already really wanted her father to recover. The protagonist, accompanied by his companions, drove up to the corporation building. There were a lot of reporters and journalists crowded around the entrance to the building. There were protesters. Some shouted that Jurong had lost its conscience and should pay for the treatment of their children. The protagonist and his companions approached the building. They looked at the protesters. The protagonist was surprised. He noted to himself that the protesters were already able to come up with a slogan very easily and quickly. She she saw her uncle among the protesters. She asked, did he get hurt too? The man angrily replied to the girl that he was the victim, and that's why they're having the protest now. Van he came up to his uncle and asked with interest, did he really create a banner for the protesters? The uncle looked at the protagonist in surprise and said that they had created this banner. After that, the protagonist grabbed his uncle's arm and decided to pull him aside. The van suddenly put several large bills into the surprise man's hand. The main character told the man not to worry because he had a lot of money. The guy said he was a reporter and wanted to dig into some insider news. The man looked at his interlocutor incredulously. Then he nodded to show that he agreed. The protagonist asked his interlocutor, Where did he come from? The man said that he came from Haddon and lived in the capital city of Shisilatun. Van asked the man, Does he live in his own house or rented in the capital? The uncle replied that his son rented the house. Protagonist asked by the interviewee if he she turns on the water or filter first while using it. The interlocutor looked at the guy in surprise and said it turns on the filter first. The protagonist then very abruptly took the money from the man's hand. The uncle reached for the money. He fearfully asked the protagonist what he wanted to do. Van showed the man his ID card and said that he was a police officer and was responsible for investigating the case. He added that if the man took the money, he would be suspected of fraud and detained. The uncle turned around and started to walk away silently. He decided not to look for trouble for himself. The girl asked the protagonist what he had found out. Van said that the man had stains on his teeth. This means that the man does not use any water filters. She she sadly and thoughtfully said someone is purposely trying to ruin her company. Afterward, the protagonist, accompanied by his companion, arrived at the hospital where the victims were. The girl was standing next to the protagonist. She asked the doctor to let him know what the situation was. The doctor said that if there was a way to detox quickly, there would be no problem. But they don't have a rapid detox method right now. The girl wasn't happy. She decided that the doctor did not want to help children at all. Main character walked up to his girlfriend and said he wanted to try talking too. Van asked the doctor if he treated patients with Chinese medicine. The doctor was surprised to hear his interlocutor talk about Chinese medicine. Van said that he had seen a recipe for detoxification soup in the ancient teacher's book. He added that it takes two medicinal substances that are very valuable and very rare. The girl excitedly told the protagonist that she would try to find everything she needed right away. The doctor asked the guy if he had tried detox soup himself. He added that the consequences could be even more dire. She she told the doctor that they should just try it. She added that she was willing to bear the responsibility herself. The doctor and the she she girl decided to try the protagonist's offer of treatment. They delivered everything they needed to the hospital. The protagonist was very satisfied. He said that the Shangguan family had quickly delivered all the rare and medicinal materials. There were several bags on the floor. Wei reported that a lot of money was spent on medicine materials, and he collected them himself. The protagonist cheerfully told his interlocutor that he was worthy of the title of first mate. Wei was quick with everything. The girl told Vanya to start as soon as possible as they had no more time to wait. The guy demanded that he be given a room and start working. The protagonist all alone started making a medicinal soup. The guy worked leisurely. He added the right ingredients to the soup and stirred it. The girl told the protagonist that he knows a lot of things, and even knows how to prepare healing potions. The protagonist told his girlfriend not to give him unnecessary compliments. He added that he had studied from the books of ancient medicine and had no doubts about his actions. She she said with a chuckle to the guy that he could survive on a deserted island with just a knife. Van replied that he had already trained to survive, but the old man wouldn't even give him a knife. Van said that he had already had missions to collect medicinal plants. He added that the old man made him memorize the recipes. She she told the main character that his mentor was very cruel. She suggested that the guy write a book about his life. Van said thoughtfully that he might call the book The Happy Life of a Bodyguard. Readers learn how the bodyguard and his girls spend their days. She she said grudgingly to her friend that if he didn't want to write a book, he didn't have to. The main character opened the lid on the pot of soup and said it was ready. 
Shishu excitedly asked the protagonist to carry his healing soup as soon as possible. Van continued to his girlfriend to get her to agree to give him her body. She smiled at the interlocutor and told him to hurry up and take the medicine to the patients. The fate of the company depends on the protagonist. The doctor walked up to the patient and said joyfully that he was seeing a real miracle. The girl asked the assistant Vei to hold a press conference as soon as possible to inform everyone about the patient's condition. Wei looked away with interest and said that the reporters had already arrived. The girl tells the protagonist that his work is done. She heads to the suppliers to find some clue. Van asked why she was so sure the problem was with the suppliers. He added that problems could be with dealers or in the manufacturing process. The girlfriend replied to the guy that mesen filters are more expensive than others because they have a special feature. Van asked the girlfriend, Does she mean the built-in chip? Shi Shu explained that if the product was defective, it would not have been able to be released. She added that their company took good care to protect their product. The protagonist thought about it. He told the woman he was talking to that everything looked strange to him. The girl replied to the protagonist that in her opinion, it was the suppliers who were the problem. Van told his girlfriend that she was smart and could get a job as a police detective. She and the protagonist will investigate Jaoli's company. Wei will investigate in the city who is inciting people to protest. Wei's assistant told his supervisor that he'd do everything without a problem. The girl turned around abruptly. She was deep in thought about something of her own. Shi Shi told the protagonist that he would be the spokesperson for their company and she would be the secretary. Van was surprised at the girl's suggestion. He asked her what she wanted to do. Sha Shu replied that she wanted an investigation by an observer. She explained that if she went to Jolly Company on behalf of her Jurong Company, she would be closely monitored there, and they would not find out anything. Van told his girlfriend that she would be his secretary. He asked that she tell him about his role. Shi Shi told the guy that he would be the senior vice president of Jurong Company. She even showed him a printed business card. Wang said to the woman he had talked to in surprise that she had planned it all out long ago. He asked, Will the salary of a bodyguard be equal to that of a Jurong vice president? The girl explained that she wanted to show everyone the importance of the protagonist. She added to let Wan know at the meeting that he would not report to any of the Jurong executives. The guy slyly asked his girlfriend, Is he really going to obey only her? She she replied that that's exactly what she meant. After which the protagonist and his girlfriend left the building and headed for the car. She told her friend that she had already asked Zhao's company to send people to meet them. The protagonist replied to the girl that he would only let her be his secretary this time. After some time, the protagonist, accompanied by his companion, arrived at the entrance to the company building. A guy in the crowd came up to Lee. He said he was honored to meet him. Van replied to the interviewer that he had a lot of questions and needed to go to the office to talk. Van, sitting at the table, sternly asked the director if he had any guesses about what had happened. Lee replied to the interlocutor that they had not found out anything yet. He wanted to talk about Jao Li's previous investigation. Van asked the man if the Quality Assurance Department was the only one who had access to the raw materials of the filters. Lee replied that they do a detailed inspection of the raw materials before they are sent to the factory, so only their departments are able to access. The main character said he needed a list of all the employees in the two departments for the last two years. The van also demanded that all employees be given a lie detector test at the nearest police station. He would formulate 50 questions for everyone. Lee turned around and walked toward the exit. He said he would do as Mr. Van asked. The protagonist said that the rest of the staff could go back and keep working. He added that he would check on the others if he had time. Zhang Yiping's employee said they would wait for the main character's visit. He asked the employee, Is the company going to move? Zhang said that the company is planning to move to a new building next year. He added that this had already been announced throughout the headquarters. The protagonist asked the Jin worker in surprise when the move was announced. Zhang said that after Jiaoli Time Square is completed, it will be the symbol of Jiaoli Company. That's why they are planning the move. The protagonist told the interviewer that even Jurong does not have such a building. He added that he is in favor of such an idea. The girl looked at the protagonist carefully and meaningfully. Jiang asked his interlocutor, Would he really support their project? The protagonist told the employee to send all the information to headquarters. Wang specified that the employee should make the drawings himself and prepare them properly. Jiang told the protagonist that he would sell him half of Zhao Litem's square if he could provide them with finances. The van looked meaningfully at the employee and said he could go back. Shishi happily told her friend that he had a good time. They were alone in the study. The main character said he showed the company's employees where their seats were. He added that he didn't want to give the Jali company a new building. At this time, the girl grabbed the protagonist by the sleeve and pulled him towards her. Shishi asked the guy if he was afraid of affecting their company's relationship. She added that she didn't want to reveal Jali's true face. The guy said Jali company wants to compete with them in real estate. Jurong has already started to enter the home appliance industry. 
Van responded that none of this would be consistent with the company's performance over the past few years. She added that it is likely that they will not be able to grow in real estate. The guy told his interlocutor that high-ranking government officials will always need luxury apartments. Wang added that Jurong will be able to sell budget apartments for ordinary people. The girl asked the guy to tell her more about the action plan. She asked if he wanted to make an image for the Shanghan family through the development of Jurong. Wang told the interviewer that housing prices have recently gone up. Therefore, it will be profitable to sell cheaper. He added that he wants to disrupt the economic order. It will make it difficult and close the borders of the two provinces. The girl excitedly said, Sun Nanguo and Zhang Chenghao are direct descendants of the Su faction. Shi Shi told her friend that she would do anything for him to help him. The girl added that if something happens, she will definitely stop Vanya. The protagonist told the interviewer with a smile that he would bring no trouble to the Jurong company. He also added that a little help would be good for him. At that time, the door opened and the director and his secretary came in. He said that he had brought the personnel files of the employees of the quality control and safety departments for the last two years. The protagonist told his interlocutor to put the documents on the table. He asked the man, how many people have left the two departments over the past years, and how many are currently employed? Only three people, including the quality assurance manager, had quit. The man said that two lie detectors had been brought in and questions could be asked. Van handed the man a sheet of paper. He said there were 50 questions on it. If you tried hard enough, you could do it in two hours. Lee took a leaf and told the protagonist they'd get right on it, at which time the protagonist took out a notebook and tore out another piece of paper. Wang told his girlfriend to call Wei Wen Tao and ask her to check the whereabouts of the three dismissed employees, and especially the quality control manager. Shi Shi winked at her friend and said that she would get on with her assignment right now. Wang told the interviewer that he would guide her through Zhang Jia Gong in a while. We need to find a suitable piece of land. He added that the first step for real estate in Jurong will start from this port city. After which the protagonist and his girlfriend drove off in a car. A guy in a car was speeding down the highway. At that time a red car started approaching them from behind. Van looked in the rearview mirror. He saw a red car approaching them. Van became agitated. He realized that some unfamiliar car was approaching them. Gradually, the red race car was already almost approaching the car where the protagonist was. Van was very much agitated. He could not understand what kind of car was following them. The protagonist decides to make a desperate maneuver. He hits the brake pedal with all his might. Then the car with the van inside abruptly drove off to the side and stopped there. The protagonist noticed the red car almost came right up to his car. Van thought to himself joyfully that at last the fish had taken the bait. Then a red race car sharply cut the main character's path. The car stopped. The doors opened and the female driver got out. The red-haired stranger told the protagonist that it had been a long time since she had met a worthy opponent like Wang in Zhangzhou City. The protagonist asked the girl, does she really want to race? He added that she can set conditions but they are playing for a bet. The female driver smiled at the guy and said she agreed. She reported that in past races they had also placed bets. The protagonist told his interlocutor that his bid might be a little high. The girl said that she would fulfill Wang's request. She added that her name is Zhang Miao Miao and there are few things she can to do. She added that she wants to make her bid. Shi Shi said excitedly to her friend not to be so impulsive. Miao Miao informed her opponent that if she defeated him she wanted night fist. The Shi Shi girl was very surprised. She didn't understand what the driver wanted them to do. Van told the interviewer that she doesn't have to drive a cool car like she has. He added that he could get his hands on a rare car with a circulation of a hundred copies. Miao Miao looked at the protagonist with interest and asked what kind of bet he was making. Wang replied that he only wanted a plot of land in Zhang Zhagang. Miao Miao asked how big a plot of land he wanted, and where exactly. The protagonist said he wanted a plot of land on the shore of Lake Zheng. He added that he would definitely pay. Wang clarified that he planned to pay only 80% of the price of the land. The driver replied that she could find 500 acres. She was also satisfied with a payment of 80%. She invited the protagonist to choose the time and place of the meeting. A van suggested that the driver meet her tomorrow morning at the ring road. Miao Miao replied that she agreed. She asked the guy if he wanted to change his car. The protagonist put his hand on the car and told his opponent that even with that car, he wouldn't lose. After that, the red-headed girl turned around and reminded the guy that they would see each other tomorrow morning. Van asked her friend excitedly, why did he agree to compete against the Miao Miao? The protagonist taps his girlfriend on the back and tells her that she has a lot of unnecessary questions. Shi Shi told her friend that he was good at trying to understand people's hearts, she demanded. The guy told her more about everything. The main character reported that the woman in the car is straightforward by nature. If she drives a luxury car in Zhangzhou City, it means that her family must be rich and powerful. Miao Miao's last name is Zhang. 
Wang told his interlocutor to ask Wei Wentao to check the name of Zhang Bing Hao's child. He assumes it will be Zhang Miao Miao. The girlfriend told her friend that he was very sinister. Van replied to the girlfriend that as the senior vice president of Jurong, he should be good at what he does. Van told his girlfriend that she should take a lie detector test tomorrow at Jaoli's company. Shi Shi told an excited friend that she wanted to go to the race with him. She advised that the guy takes himself in danger. The protagonist smiled at his girlfriend and said that Zhang Miao Miao would not eat him. Shi Shi told her friend that he was the one who could eat his rival. The girl said thoughtfully that if she befriended the local chief's daughter, they could find quite a few useful connections. Wang told the girlfriend that he would not ride a donkey to find another donkey. The boyfriend added that no one could have more influence than the heir of the Shangguan family. The girl replied to her friend that he was an ass. After that they got into the car and drove away. The Shishi girl arrived at the corporation building. She had a meeting with Wei. The assistant said that the laid-off employees moved to other companies for bigger salaries. The quality control manager left Jiaoli and took much of the company's product information with him. Shishi said excitedly to the assistant that they might suspect the manager. Wei said that the manager's name was Liu Shiwei, who had been with the company for almost 20 years. Liu Shiwei has a good relationship with Li Li. The guy told me that most of the company's stock was right in Lu Sivi's hands. After the manager was fired, his shares were no longer available to the company. The girl thought for a moment. She said that the fired manager had nothing to lose anymore. Wei said that Liu Shiwei has a daughter who is still in school in the country. Shi Shi instructed the assistant to send someone to the Wu country. The next morning the girl Miao Miao was waiting near her car for the protagonist at the specified place at the entrance to the highway. The red-headed driver looked out at the highway and waited for the van to arrive. Very soon the main character's car appeared in the distance. He was approaching his rival. Van opened the car door and said that Miao Miao is very punctual for him. The driver asked the guy, why didn't his acquaintance who was with him earlier come? Van explained with a smile to his interlocutor that if he had one more person with him, the car would be heavier. Miao Miao warned her opponent that the barrier would rise in five minutes. She added that the winner would be the first one to jump out of the highway. Van gripped his steering wheel confidently. He shouted to his new acquaintance that he understood. Two cars were parked side by side at the barrier. They prepared to start the race. At the exact time specified, the barrier began to rise. Drivers prepared to start. The female driver drove her car at top speed and sped off. The race car sped ahead of the protagonist. Van said admiringly that his rival reached a speed of 100 kilometers per hour in two seconds. Then the protagonist hit the gas pedal and his car sped off. The protagonist maxed out the gas pedal to reach top speed as soon as possible. The Miao Miao moved her hands professionally and deftly, maneuvering along the road. Van drove the car confidently on the track. His rival tried not to let him pass him in front. Miao Miao maxed out her speed. Her car took the lead on the track. During this time, the employees watched through video cameras everything that happened on the highways. The guys watched the race on the freeway with amazement. One said that the driving skills of the two unfamiliar drivers were very excellent. Another worker said they should call the main office and ask them to stop the two speeding cars. At that time, the doors opened and the manager came in. The employees greeted the department head. The supervisor sternly told his subordinates that two sports cars could go all the way through. The guy said fearfully to the supervisor that the cars had to be stopped, as something could go wrong. The principal told his subordinate sternly that the daughter of the local chief was racing, and he couldn't stop anything. The protagonist continued to race his rival down the track. He was catching up with her. Miao Miao looked in the rearview mirror and noticed that Vanya's car was catching up with her from behind. The girl said with a smile that her opponent doesn't like to give up. She added that she will give the guy some more hope for victory. Miao Miao knew there was a neighborhood up ahead where traffic would be heavy. She decided to beat the guy there in a matter of seconds. Then the girl hit the gas pedal. Her car sped forward. The protagonist said that his rival's car and skills are superb. It's amazing to him. The girl was speeding down the highway. The protagonist couldn't get close to her. Miao Miao shouted to her opponent that he would now look at her true strength. Suddenly the racer saw a black car approaching her from behind. She was surprised that the guy could keep up with her. Miao Miao decided to use special means in the car. She wanted to win at all costs to get herself a night 15. After which the girl pressed a special green button in her car. The car with the racer jumped forward very sharply. It left a trail of fire behind it. Van got excited. He realized that his rival had activated the vacuum jet system. He realized that the girl wanted Knight of 15 very badly. The protagonist was staring at his rival. He didn't understand why she wasn't stopping. The special gas pedal should have shut down by now. Miao Miao sat behind the wheel and counted the seconds. She decided that in a second, she would completely get rid of her pursuer. At which time, due to the tremendous speed in the wheels of the car, the girl started having problems. Miao Miao shouted fearfully to herself that she had already reached the limit. The girl pressed the brake pedal with all her might. She yelled to stop now. The sudden braking caused the car to veer sideways and fly over the guardrail and into the ditch. 
Van stopped his car. He noticed that there was only a pile of smoke and dust where the girl's car had fallen. The protagonist from his car looked sideways at the sight of his rival's fall. He couldn't believe that the girl could have been so stupid. After that, the guy went down over the side railing to try to help the female driver. Wang reminded himself that he only wants to get land in Zhang Jiagong through race and ruin the real estate market in Jiangsu. Van walked through the woods and said out loud that everything was so stupid that he didn't even want to save the girl. The protagonist thought to himself that he hadn't heard any explosions yet. He figured it must be great luck. At which time, the man in the surveillance center banged his fist angrily on the equipment. The principal standing near the monitors shouted that the racers were a bunch of reckless rich kids. A subordinate asked the squad leader what they should do now. The man shouted to the guys to notify every brigade and start search and rescue. They need to rescue definitely people from the cars. The subordinate guys all shouted to the boss in a friendly and loud voice that they would do just that. Wang walked by himself through the forest and called out to his girlfriend named Zhang Miao Miao. Suddenly, the protagonist smelled an odor that was very alarming to him. The guy saw a wrecked car in the thicket. He started to make his way to it through the bushes. Van was making his way across the meadow to the car. He saw that the car was very badly beaten up. The protagonist got very excited. He noticed a female driver inside the car. Miao Miao was injured. She was sitting behind the driver's seat and was completely unconscious. Wang became very worried. He thought to himself that Zhang Miao Miao might have died. Suddenly, the girl in the car opened her eyes. She started to regain consciousness. Miao Miao looked at the protagonist carefully and asked, Is she still alive? Van picked up his acquaintance in his arms and threw her out of the car. He said that the girl scared him to death. Miao Miao said she couldn't die. She said her car was made of aircraft-grade materials to reduce most of the external damage. The girl thanked the protagonist for rushing to her rescue. Van laid his acquaintance gently on the ground. He noticed that the girl's leg was cramped. Van opened the car door wide. He needed to help the driver. The guy explained to the girl that her foot was stuck in a crevice and he would help get it out. The protagonist then tried inside the car to get the girl's leg. Miao Miao cried out fearfully. Wang told the girl to bear it a little longer. The driver tried her best to contain her emotions. She told the protagonist to keep going. Van looked at his new acquaintance with surprise. He decided to continue helping her. After which the protagonist reached further into the interior of the car to fully pull his acquaintance out. Miao Miao was lying on the ground. She decided that hope which comes at a time of desperate situation, could make one weep with joy. Racer lay on the ground and thought the thought of dying from loss of blood frightened her very much. The protagonist helped his girlfriend free herself. He shouted happily to her that he was all set. Miao Miao thought to herself in surprise that she was almost unfamiliar with the main character, but he was treating her gently. Van gently lifted the girl's legs. He told her that she had broken bones in both legs. Meow Meow irritably shouted to the guy not to look at her like that. She was really scared. Van said that girls usually can't stand the pain of broken bones. He handed his girlfriend a special anesthetic. The guy explained to the girlfriend that after she took an anesthetic, he would set her leg bones. After that, the girl would have to be sent to the hospital. Meow Meow took the pill from the protagonist's hand and took it inside. The medicine began to take effect. The girl looked at the protagonist and said that she wasn't in so much pain now. Miao Miao excitedly asked the protagonist, does he really want to fuse her bones together? Van looked worriedly at the racer and said he would only fix her bones. Afterward, the guy ripped off a piece of his clothing to get cloth for bandaging. Van applying the bandage for the girl, thought he was helped by the skills he had learned in the army. The guy looked at his torn sleeve and said that this piece of cloth wouldn't be enough. Van decided to donate his shirt completely. He figured it was his newly purchased clothing. The main character started to take off his shirt. The driver was very surprised and worried. The Mio Miao looked at the guy's body and asked with interest, Why does he have a lot of scars? Van told the girl with a smile that the scars on his body were his medals. The girl got very excited. She yelled to the main character that she was only curious. Van carefully bandaged the girl's leg. He told her cheerfully that everything was ready. Miao Miao looked at her interlocutor with interest. She could not understand what kind of story was hidden in a guy with such scars. Van took the girl by the shoulder and told her not to get used to it much. The guy picked up the injured female driver in his arms and said they had to go. The girl shouted that she was still an injured person. After that, the Miao Miao reached out her hand and touched the guy's chest with it. The protagonist stopped. He put the girl's feet on the ground. Wang looked at Miss Zhang and said that he had something important to discuss with her now. Miao Miao looked at her interlocutor with surprise and asked if he could tell her. Van was carrying his girlfriend. He told her they shouldn't be so close together. Suddenly the girl was very embarrassed. She shouted sharply to the guy that he was a pervert. The main character was amused. He was amused by his girlfriend's comical reaction. A little later in the evening, police and paramedics arrived at the scene of the car accident. People found a black car parked on the road. The doctors prepared to hospitalize the injured girl. 
The subordinate told the supervisor that the owner of the black car came down the road here. He suggested we start here too. The principal sternly told the boys to immediately go look for Miss Zhang. At this time, the main character approached from outside. He told the manager not to worry. The man was greatly surprised. Wang was carrying Miao Miao in his arms. He told those present that he had brought the girl back. The guy said that Miao Miao's leg was broken. She needs to go to the hospital for examination. The man shouted very excitedly to the girl that she had scared him a lot. He added that if something happened to the Miao Miao, there was no way they would be able to explain it. The racer lying on the stretcher asked the man, why didn't he act sooner if he was so concerned about her? The man was very surprised. He realized that it was very difficult to find many people to locate the girl. At this time, the main character gently placed his hand on Miao Miao's head. Van told his companion carefully to spend a few months in bed to regain her strength. The girl should not drive for six months. The racer said excitedly that she will listen to him this time. She added for the protagonist to come to her in the hospital and visit her. Van handed the girl a business card. He told her to call if she got bored. The Miao Miao took the V from the guy's hands and looked at it with interest. The girl was overjoyed. She replied to her savior that she would be sure to call him. After that, the patient was transported to the hospital. Her father arrived there soon after. The girl's father was sitting in the doctor's office that was supposed to restore Miao Miao's health. The medic looked at the x-rays and said it's very rare for bones to fuse perfectly. Zhang Bing Hao said impatiently to the doctor that he was interested in the condition of his daughter. The medic explained that with the usual method of treatment, the girl would have been in bed for five or six months. After the cunning method, she would only need a month to recover. The man asked with interest to his interlocutor if he knew this unusual technique. The doctor replied that he had studied this kind of healing methodology. He did not expect that there were people in the world who knew such a technique. The doctor informed the girl's father that her daughter had been saved by an expert who could be familiarized with. The man then stood up and told the medic that he would meet his daughter's savior and thank him. At that time the girl was in the ward. Her father came to her. Mia O Miao looked at the business card. She told herself that she already felt like calling her friend. The girl's father came over. He snatched the business card out of her hands. Father read the information on the card in surprise. He asked who was Wang Zheng. The girl got cranky. She said she didn't know who Wang Zheng was. She demanded that her father give her the card back. The man handed the card to his daughter. He asked her to tell him more about Wang Zheng. Mao Miao turned around and told the man that she didn't understand at all what he was talking about. The girl turned to the side and wondered. She didn't understand why her father was so curious. The father told his daughter that he will look into finding the main character. He added that only guy Su Tianran has the right to flirt with Miao Miao. Miao Miao said excitedly to her father, Su Tianran boyfriend only loves his girlfriend Zhang Minqi. The man grudgingly told the girl that Wang Zheng was no match for the two brothers of the Su family. He added that in order to hold the position of vice president of Zhurong, a guy should be more than 40 years old. Miao Miao waved her hands excitedly. She shouted that Wang Zheng was only 25 or 26 years old. The father judiciously told his daughter that the guy Wang Zheng saved her after the car accident. The red-haired girl shyly confirmed to father that the protagonist was her savior. The man asked his daughter how is she going to repay Vanya for saving her. After a brief pause, the girl asked her father to give her a thousand acres of land on the shores of Jiang Lake in Zhangjiagang. The father asked his daughter, Is this the kind of reward the Wang Zheng guy asked her for? Miao Miao excitedly told the man that the wager in the bet was only for a thousand acres of land. The daughter explained to the father that her rival could have gotten to the finish line without her. She didn't assume the guy would stop and save her. The man held out an apple to his daughter and said he would give the lad a thousand acres of land, but he must have a good plan and a blueprint. Miao Miao was eating an apple and said that her father loved her the most. She added that her mother was very strict with her. The father told the daughter that her mother knew about her hospitalization. Now the woman is on a plane to see her. The girl became agitated. She told her father fearfully that this time she would really be punished. At that time, the man's cell phone rang in his pocket. He decided to step back and talk. The father explained to his daughter that he was leaving. He added for Miao Miao to think hard about how she should behave with her mother. After that, the man walked out the door and slammed it behind him. The girl was left alone. Miao Miao sadly realized that she couldn't change anything. She had to wait for her mother's arrival. She couldn't stop thinking about the protagonist. The protagonist was in his house at the time. He was communicating with Assistant Vei. Wang told his interlocutor to keep a good eye on things. He added that Liu Xiwei should meet his daughter. Wei asked the interviewer what about a reporter named Cheng Bowen. The aide said that the reporter received 50,000 yuan to deliberately act out a scene during the interview with Xi Xi. Wei said that the person who bribed the reporter has not yet been identified. He still needs more time to track down the intruder. Van replied to his interlocutor to keep watching. 
The protagonist said to himself that the unknown rival was a real headache for him. He thought that it was very difficult for him to be the bodyguard of the Shangguan family. A little later, Van was driving through the mountainous countryside accompanied by his girlfriend in an automobile. After a long pause, the protagonist asked his interlocutor, Where is Sheng Fei now? The girlfriend said that Sean Fei's girlfriend also left the capital today. She asked the boyfriend why Toot wanted to go with her to Sean Fei's hometown. The protagonist became agitated. He shouted to his companion that he was only her bodyguard. Van thought to himself that it would be good for him to see the old Shang's favorite wife. The main character was reminiscing about his army years. The guy at the table was telling him he missed his wife. The protagonist was on a mission with his colleagues. They were advancing with weapons. A comrade told the protagonist that he bought a beautiful necklace before his wife. He decided to send it after he went on vacation. The soldier was very badly wounded. He was lying on earth holding the necklace. He said he couldn't send it to wife anymore. Van was now driving in a car at full speed. He was holding a box with a necklace in it. The main character was holding a box. He decided to give it to his dead comrade's wife. Van pressed the gas pedal and the car sped even faster to its destination. The protagonist, accompanied by his companion, arrived at Liren village in Gongsu province. A guy was driving on a mountain highway and there were other cars overtaking him on the road nearby. Van said confidently to his companion that in an hour they would be at Sean Fei's house. The interlocutor told the lad suspiciously that he was familiar with these places and had a good sense of direction. She asked if Wang had ever been to Sean Fei's home village. The main character got worried. He told his girlfriend that he'd been to these places before. Van said that he had come here on business a couple of years ago. He thought to himself that he could follow the route with his eyes closed. After much deliberation, Shai Shi told her friend that she understood. At this time the Sheng Pei girl arrived at her ancestral home with her luggage. The guest was surprised. She was amazed that she hadn't been back for two years and her house was brand new. The girl remembered that her ancestral home was a small, modest one-story house. The girl noticed that there was now a huge, tall three-story house in front of her. Things had changed a lot. At that time the front door opened abruptly. A woman came out and looked excitedly at the guest. The hostess said with a smile to her daughter to come in. She added that it was hot outside. The girl ran very close to the woman and hugged her joyfully around the neck. Sheng Pei even cried a little bit from the excess of feelings. She was happy to see her mother. The woman told her daughter not to cry, adding that she came back to her because she missed her. The daughter told her mother to go to town with her this time. She promised to take care of the woman. The woman explained that she could not leave. She added that the house had gotten bigger and the girl's grandparents had moved in. Sheng Pei asked with interest to her mother. Where did she already have the money to build such a house from? The woman gave her hand to her interlocutor and said that she built everything thanks to the money she sends her. The daughter explained judiciously to her mom that she wanted to help her and her grandparents. Sheng Pei didn't realize who else but her had been sending money to her family for the past few years. The woman took the suitcase from her daughter and told her to get in quickly and not to stand in the sun. The girl looked closely at her mother's clothes. She noticed that she was very stylishly dressed. Sheng Pei saw that the woman was wearing a very inexpensive designer outfit. The girl saw that her mother's clothes were styled after the collection of the international brand Iman In. The daughter asked her mother about her dress with consternation and excitement. The mother replied that she received the designer skirt in the mail last year. The girl became worried. She couldn't understand who could send her mother an expensive designer outfit that was hard to get. The woman invited the guest inside the house. She said that grandpa and grandma were already waiting. Sheng Pei stepped inside the house and greeted her grandparents in the hall. The grandmother hugged her granddaughter's arms. She said she was very glad she was back. She reminded the girl of Fei Lin's boyfriend. The girl said she remembered Fei Lin's boyfriend. He had a runny nose all the time. Grandmother and mother gave each other a sly look. Grandmother had something else to say to the girl. The old woman told the girl that Fei Lin is now working in Capital Company as a sales manager and earning a lot of money. The grandmother told the surprised granddaughter that she would look very good with boyfriend Fei Lin together. The granddaughter excitedly told her grandmother that her career is on the upswing and she doesn't want to get married right now. After that, the old woman shook her head and told the girl that she was no longer young at all. The old woman told the girl that Fei Lin's boyfriend is very good and now he looks good. She suggested that the girl should meet her former acquaintance first. Sheng Pei replied to her grandmother that she didn't want to date a guy and get married so early. A mother told her daughter that if her grandmother told her to do something, she should meet a guy. At that time there was a noise at the door from outside. It was a young guy arriving. The doors opened and a guy named Fei Lin appeared on the doorstep. He was carrying bags in his hands. The guest entered the house and cheerfully greeted all the people inside. The guy looked to the side and saw that the girl Sean Fei had already returned as well. The girl greeted her guest cheerfully and called him with a snotty smile. The guy was glad that the girl still remembered him. He informed her with a smile that his rhinitis was long gone. 
At this time, the girl decided to treat the guest. She poured water into his glass. Sheng Fei gave the guy a glass and told him to drink some water. She was surprised that Fei was able to buy a house in the capital. She herself lived in her friend's house. The guy explained to his interlocutor that housing prices in the capital were very high. He offered her to move in with him. Fei added to the girlfriend that they would be able to take care of each other. The girl sat down on the couch. She told the guy that his offer wasn't very good. The grandmother looked sternly at her granddaughter and said there was nothing wrong with the suggestion. Fei told the girl that in his house they would each have their own room and would not interfere with each other. Sheng Pei sat down and thought about it. She didn't know what to say to the guy who was trying to help her. Fei looked at his companion with excitement. He realized that he needed to offer her something else now. The guy told the girl that he would help her move out the next time she came to the capital. He added that he would not interfere with her family reunion. The guy headed for the exit. Suddenly Fei heard someone yell for him to stand. The grandfather told the guy to stay and have a drink with him. He also offered to eat together. Fei turned around and walked to the center of the hall. He said that he would honor the old man's request. The boy was overjoyed. He thought to himself quite a bit that his grandfather understood him. Old man asked the Fei to tell him in detail about his house. Fei replied that there was nothing interesting in his house. The girl realized that her longtime friend was just living in an ordinary two-bedroom house. She herself was preparing to become a major shareholder in Blue Ocean with a net worth of over a hundred million. After that, preparations for the family dinner began in the house. Someone called out for Shang Chi and Shang Hao to go eat. Afterward, the family and all the guests gathered around a big, beautiful, and round table. Sheng Pei offered her older sister a taste of her little red braised pork. The woman thanked the girl and said she was thoughtful. Another guest said that Sheng Pei at her age definitely needs a boyfriend. The girl was very unhappy. She just wanted to have a conversation and avoid the subject of her marriage. After that, Sheng Pei picked up her phone. She wanted to contact her friends. The girl hoped that Shi Xin Wang Zheng would come to her very soon and save her. Suddenly, there was the sound of a car pulling up outside. All the guests turned to look out the window. Daughter told her mom that her friends are here and she's going to go meet them now. The protagonist got out of the car. He scrutinized the house in front of him. Next to the guy was his co-worker Shi Xi. They were waiting for their girlfriend to go outside. The protagonist scrutinized the house in front of him. He realized that the cottage was well built. Sheng Pei ran out and happily hugged her friends. Shu Shu became worried. She didn't understand what was going on here. At that time, Fei's boyfriend came outside. He looked at his girlfriend carefully. Fei was very much agitated and displeased. He didn't understand what kind of man had come to the house now. Sheng Pei was very happy that her friends had arrived. She told her friend Shi Shi that they had arrived just in time. Girl introduced her best friend named Xing Guan Shi Shi to her mom. The guests greeted the woman. She said she had heard a lot about her from Sheng Pei. The woman informed the girl that without her help, Sheng Pei would be in trouble. The girl introduced the main character to her mom. Van greeted the woman and called her daughter-in-law. Sheng Pei was very much taken aback. She couldn't understand why her friend called her mom that. Shi Shi was also very much surprised. She didn't understand why Wang called the mistress his daughter-in-law. Shi Shu angrily asked her friend, so why did he call the woman a daughter-in-law? The protagonist became agitated. He remembered that he always called the woman's sister-in-law when her old man was around. Van told the landlady that he called her daughter-in-law out of habit because she looked very young. Faye's boyfriend decided to greet the protagonist, too. He extended his hand to him. The guy gave his name and said he was a former classmate of Sheng Pei. Now Faye works in the capital at a soul garden company. The main character greeted the interlocutor and gave his name. He added that he had never heard of the soul garden company. Van realized that his interlocutor always says where he lives. A personal home gives a Fei a sense of accomplishment. Fei replied to the protagonist that he had just arrived in town and couldn't know all the companies. Fei then asked his interlocutor what he does for a living. The protagonist replied that he works as a bodyguard and driver. The guy replied that at normal times the guard should be free. He himself usually holds meetings until 9 o'clock in the evening. Shi Shu looked carefully at the guy's conversation. She realized that Fei was competing with Wang Jin. After that, the girl called her friend the president and reminded him that he had just bought a Maybach car for 10 million. Fei was very much amazed at how a security guard could buy a Maybach for 10 million. A woman came in and offered her guests a taste of fresh peanuts. She added that the nuts had been roasted according to a unique recipe. The main character decided to taste the treat. He carefully opened the peanut shell. Van liked the peanuts. They were delicious. He remembered what peanuts his sister-in-law used to send to old Shang. She, she sat herself thoughtfully. She decided to try to eat some peanuts. The girl opened the shell carefully and pulled out a single peanut kernel. The nuts seemed very tasty to the girl. She liked them. Grandma said happily that their guests looked like good children. She said she was glad Shang Pei had such good friends. Fei told his grandmother cheerfully that when he had time he would take her to the capital for a walk. 
The old woman told her granddaughter that the guy cares for her a lot. She added that Sheng Pei has known her friend since childhood. The girl sadly replied to her grandmother that she already had a boyfriend. The old woman and Fei were very much troubled. She was struck and surprised at such words from the girl. She she thought to herself that she hadn't seen enough scenes of rivalry and jealousy between the main character and Fei Lin. After that, Sheng Pei pointed to the main character who was sitting next to her. She said that Wang was her boyfriend.